Go ahead. Welcome to Sovereign Soul Unca- Unchained Mind. I'm sitting here with Burn the Corporate Fiction. We're going to kind of get off on some cool shit here tonight. Um, we're going to be a little bit all over the place. We're going to start off with, uh, we're going to talk about this uh, this heinous murder that took place in Utah. Um, you know, I was thinking back, there's so many of them. I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, I think his name was uh, Daniel Shaver. Are you familiar with him? No, uh, I'm not. But where there's that Bundy Ranch incident too. Now these are before police officers were required to and uh, carry the the body cam footage, right? So I mean that's what that's what really separates this um, from those other instances is we have conclusive we have conclusive evidence that he was doing nothing but exercising his rights. But what what about him? What about the Daniel Shaver? Well, this, uh, if I've got the right name, I, I believe I do. It was in a La Quinta Inn in Arizona, I believe in Phoenix. And uh, he was there for work. This guy was an exterminator. And part of his tools as an exterminator is a pellet rifle. And he was showing some of the guests this, this uh, pellet rifle or something. But some Karen called and said she saw a man with a gun. And they showed up there and got this guy out of his hotel. He was wearing shorts and a T-shirt, had him crawling across the floor, yelling several different commands at him that were impossible to follow at the same time. And uh, one of the cops there uh, just opened fire with an AR, pumped about, punched, just punched a bunch of rounds into him and killed him right there on the spot. And he had done absolutely nothing wrong. Um there's uh Philando Castile, another case. Um, we go all the way back to uh oh, what was that kid's name in LA? That pellet rifle one sounds very cool. Was that recently? It was within the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh let me see if I can look that up. It's uh but I mean it's not just it's not just that. I mean, there was a uh, um what was that kid? It's uh oh hey Leanne. What was that kid that they beat the hell out of in L.A.? And his dad was a retired sheriff deputy. Kelly Thomas. 
Kelly Thomas was his name. And this was actually caught on video. And they beat this guy to death. He had some mental issues. They beat this guy and he died of his of his injuries, all because uh he didn't have an ID. You know, um we're seeing more and more of this all over the place. I mean, this is a this is just one recent of many, many uh incidences like this. And I think uh a lot of it is to do with what we were talking about last night with the militarization of the police. I mean, let's face it, man. What do they say when they got this whole idea of dress for success? You dress for the part that you're going to be in, right? This is why people that work in business wear suits and a tie. Um, the people will act according to how they're dressed. Well, if you dress up like a fucking combat soldier, you're going to act like you're in combat, especially yeah, if every day you're inundated at roll call or whatnot with, all right, everybody out there is trying to fucking kill you, you know? So the most important thing is, and I've seen their training videos, Ryan, guy telling them saying, if you're not willing to shoot a grandma or a child to save a cop's life, then you can just go on home. Because the most important thing is that you make it home. <laughs> I'm like, that's well, some sick shit, man. I was actually doing a lot of thinking. And because I didn't know if you were going to do a show tonight or if, I, you know, because we need to continue to cover this concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was actually preparing for a future show, um, which we can present some of this evening, man. I was actually reading the Constitution. I had the Constitution open up here that, that uh the United States Constitution, and I have the uh, Michigan Constitution and various other things. And I was really doing some thinking, you know, what separated this country, the, the biggest problem is, let me start by saying this, right, is I do not oppose uh, law enforcement, okay? And I'm going to start this off with saying that but there's a huge difference between law enforcement and policy enforcement. OK, so and the reason I say I don't oppose law enforcement is because what separates this country and when we drafted from the moment we drafted the Declaration of Independence to the Articles of Confederation to the Constitution and each document built on each other. OK, so that's that's what people don't understand is that they, each document built on the next one. They didn't get rid of the Articles of Confederation because as soon as you start reading the Constitution, the Constitution already goes into the states already exist. So where's the document that created the states from the colonies? Well, that's the Articles of Confederation. Is that, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. The, the, const the federal constitution did not create the states. The states pre-existed the, the constitution. The states created the federal constitution and the people created the states through the Articles of Confederation, right? Where they each adopted their own, their own state uh, founding documents. So, um, What's important to realize about the 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 our original republic, republic it, it was a confederation of individual countries, even under the Constitution. And the Constitution was drafted not to give people privileges, but to tell the federal government exactly what its only role is. Anything not in the Constitution, the federal government has no authority to do. Unless that document says the federal government can do it, they have no authority to do it. And before we can even discuss that, we have to look at what it was that the founders were, were thinking. Now, uh, if you don't mind, and I can just show this real quick. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. Because I don't know what you're, what, if you had material planned or not, but um, let me present this real quick, my screen. And I want to just show something. And I believe it's Article 3, Section 2 is going to really illustrate what I'm talking about. So when I say I don't oppose law enforcement, the biggest, but what I do think is there's a caveat that in order to enforce law, you should know what law is. And more importantly, you should know the difference between law and equity. Okay. Yep. If we did have that, because each law enforcement officer takes an oath to uphold the constitution, uphold, protect, and defend the constitution of the United States, then we would have never gotten to this point. The 14th amendment would have never been ratified. And by now it would have already been removed, even though it has been ratified. And there's, you know, there's some benefit to having been taken over by this corporate oligarchy for the brief time of bringing kind of like some societal issues to light. But now we need to go back to the original structure of this country 
with the exception of what the problem was never in the federal constitution. Okay. And what the federal constitution did was took an overreach of power because there, there were certain changes being made in this each state constitution. There was campaign going on to change within each state constitution to resolve, redress certain uh, inhumane issues that were taking place at the time. And the federal government took advantage of that opportunity to hijack that movement under the banner of the federal government and use it to overreach powers. And I'm, that's what I'm going to kind of show you real quick. But the very first thing we have to understand is the difference between law and equity, right? Check this out, Dad. So whenever you want to, I'm going to go down to uh, article. Let's see what you're at going too quickly. Article one. So we want to go down to article three, section two. Now these article three courts are the de jure courts. Okay. These are the courts we should have. And there's only the only de jure court here is going to be um, the Supreme court. You see that the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme court and in such inferior courts as Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. And that's for handling internal issues within Congress and within their federal situation that they got going in, on in there because any discussion of law and breach of the law is considered court and judicial process, right? So, um, but it says the judicial power is in one Supreme Court. This is our de jure court, okay? And the reason they refer to Article I courts is because those are <laughs> established by Congress. And those courts are are essentially under executive power, right? Um, or executive and legend the court as they exist today, they're under executive power. But let me let's this is what I want to bring up right here, and let me zoom in. The judicial power in all cases shall uh, the judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity. Okay in law and equity. So why do you think that the Constitution makes a, a distinction between law and equity? And that should further illustrate how illegitimate, once we understand what the difference is, how illegitimate, where are you at? Uh, I'm not, I have heard of the book, um, Flow state, but I don't. I have not uh, perused it or anything. Have you ever heard of it, Ryan? Fruit of, from a poisonous tree. Yes, and that's exactly the correct thing. Is this this? That's what I'm going to get through. Everything that happened past the Civil War is fruit of the poisonous tree. And even if you want to admit uh, or uh, make admissible the events of the Civil War, for everything for sure after 1933 is 100% rotten. Because once you get post Civil War it's poisonous tree. But once you get past the bankruptcy, I mean, that's the poisonous fruit of an already poisonous tree, right? So um, this right here, this is one form of action, the civil action. So it's basically what, what this rule did in civil and criminal procedures converted our entire court system over to equity, right? So understanding that, right here, you understand that there's a difference between law and equity. If there was no difference between law and equity, there would be there would be no reason to make this distinguish this distinction right here right okay so we what made this country different and 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 better than every other country in the world was the fact that first we have to understand that that law what is law okay why so they say law and equity what's the difference between law and equity well what is law well the law of this land is the constitution okay but in order for something to be established, there has to be a law for it to be established in. So what's the underlying law that that all contracts and all constitutions, because the Constitution is a contract. This is a contract between the, the, the state constitutions are a contract between the people of the state and the representatives that they elect to to represent them. And that's mutual consent. OK, and that's why it's important that the people have the decision that to uh, like we were talking about our, on our show last night, to decide the laws in which they are to live under, right? Which the federal government was never intended to do. That was left to the people of the state. So the people of the state established the state constitution, right? And then those states established the federal constitution with the ultimate powers is within the people. So what is, so these are all contracts that require mutual consent. Well, the underlying law that the Declaration of Independence that is my background right here was established in is that is, is it was founded on natural law. Now that law is not created. 
That law was never created. That law has only been recognized. You cannot create natural law. There's a reason we call rights rights. It's because it's what is right. You don't need somebody to tell you what is right. You do not need to, you don't need somebody to tell you what is right. right. You know what's right. And that law, so you have natural law philosophers like John Locke and William Blackstone, who heavily influenced our founding fathers when they wrote the Declaration of Independence. And um, it, that's what the Declaration, that is the law, the system of laws, natural law, that the common law that the Constitution was drafted in, right? So again, uh, if you read the Declaration of Independence, it says that governments are instituted among men to protect these rights, that all men are endowed with unalienable rights, right, by their creator, right, to right, life, right. liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They're referring to natural law, natural rights, and that governments are only instituted among men to protect those rights. So what they did was they, it was genius. They created a contract in natural law. And that contract was recognizing and agreeing to protect natural law. So they made a contract in natural law, which is it, right, to recognize and protect natural law and that individual liberty. That's what the, the each state constitution, Articles of Confederation, and well, they've done push that all to the fuck with, though. They're not even going by none of that now. No, that's because so they've gotten rid of law. They've gotten rid of this judicial power in all cases, law and equity. That's what I was showing over here on this tab. Right here, one form of action. Now it's all civil action. It's equity, suits and equity, right? Practice and equity, right? Everything's equity now. Well, there's a difference between equity and law. And that's what I'm trying to help everybody understand is that. So what is law? Law is, natural. <laughs> law is the inherent rights that you have that nobody can take without your consent, without your informed consent. OK, and that's life, liberty, property, the right to defend your life, liberty and property. A right to contract primarily, right? Us, essentially, I summed it up right here when I was making two notes. It can be it can be summed up primarily in these two things. Your right to self-preservation, which is the protection of yourself, your family, your livelihood, and your right to self-determination. Your right to choose for yourself what you are and are not going to engage in, okay? And that's what this country was founded on. Now, what is equity? Why is, why is that a different? Why did the Constitution make a distinction? Equity results from contracts. OK, equity is uh, equity is how did I put it? I wrote it was equity is is um, the result of a contract and equity is determining what is ethical, equitable and enforceable in an agreement knowingly and willfully entered into through mutual consent between two or more parties. So this Constitution was a contract and the Supreme Court was vested in making sure that the law was preserved. And then so there were courts of equity. Or, in, or the judiciary was uh, permitted to act in equity, but that ec you could only end up in a jurisdiction of <laughs> equity if you knowingly agreed to a contract. So if I, Dad, if I entered into a contract with you to perform a service or pay X amount of money uh, for something, right, and and I didn't pay you, the judiciary was permitted to hear that case in equity, okay, right? Um. And then if I if if there was a judgment passed and I did not uh, pay you, then I would be put in what was called a debtor's prison. And we had those. Right. And that's it. That, that those have been around for. But they're for debtors. Right. And um, debtors jail, debtor prison, debtor, whatever. Right. Debtor detention. Right. But that's equity. So what they've done is they've gotten rid of the law completely by erasing your knowledge of what the law is when. When right after we formed this good, the, this government was formed, James Madison was asked, what type of government is it that you've given us? And he said, a constitute or a republic, if you can keep it. And George Washington was standing <coughs> nearby, and he said, in order to keep it, every man must know the law. Now, I go back to law enforcement. How can you be a law enforcement officer if you don't even know that there's a difference between law and equity? Law is preserving the natural rights. OK, so the only time the actual law is broken is if there's a victim. OK, equity results in a, uh, a breach of contract. OK, equity is a commercial term. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And this is a very important distinction to uh, to understand, because the 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 institution. Do you still have that 14th Amendment uh, situation on your? Um, yeah, I do. That with the Andrew Johnson. Now we want to look at this in a whole new light, right? If we read this, 
That's on that congressional record, uh, 19, it's in May. 60, 61. No, it's the 60s one, the, the June 67, I think it was, or 63, 67. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. And I'm at what Andrew page? Johnson's veto message, because this is important to understand, right? He He's going to reiterate what I just said. And Wait, what, what page to, are you on, uh, uh, looking for on that? Because there's a lot of shit in here about that. It was at, uh, 15, uh, 4, 0. It, you didn't leave it up. Hold on. I'll grab it. Well, I'm, I've got the PDF up right now. I'm just looking for which part to highlight. 14. Hang on. Uh, no, I didn't write that one down. <clears throat> Gwag's in the house tonight, too. I got ZXL Master, Flow State, FE Nation, a bunch of other people that are not showing up. Oh, excuse me. You guys should go watch the speech that got Schaefer Cox thrown into a federal. He was gaining too much of a following, now doing 26 years for no crime. Yeah, this. listen, oh, what they've got, all these proposed little things, like we've got this Constitution and all this other fucking shit, it doesn't matter. Nobody's observing it. Nobody has observed it. I've looked at the entire history of this nation has been nothing. The thing is because everybody's forgotten the law and go to the 1560s. You know what? No, I mean, even back when Mer when Lewis People and Clark don't understand that the purpose of the Constitution was not to protect our rights. It was merely only to give the government power to do something instead of nothing. And anything that's not written in the Constitution, the government cannot do it which is what makes the 14th, 14th Amendment in the first place illegitimate. And the people, the reason the Constitution exists is because we are the ones that are supposed to enforce this. We are. We as a people are. Why do you well, think the first lines in all of these is we the people? My, my point being, though, is that it's it's all great. I mean, it's wonderful. But when you look back, it's never it's always been in turmoil. This whole thing. I was just watching that thing. I think I told you about that uh, thing I watched about Meriwether Lewis. Where the hell? It was just surrounded his quote unquote suicide, right? And the guy in there was going, I don't know. This country's coming to a hell of a thing. You know, I mean, and it's, this is like what, 1830 something. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. You know, they were even fighting about the shit then. I mean, it's That's just because the constant, states are constant, constant. This was in the this was within the states. OK, so the states had the right of self-determination. The people of the states had the right of self-determination. OK, there was issues about slip, but none of those things, none of those things were actually in the Constitution. That's why President Andrew Johnson, if you look and read that veto, he says that they they were never so. What the 14th Amendment is a, is supposed to be an equal protection law or and that's why the, the heading says equal protection law or tool of usurpation in the congressional record. And they're bringing this up because they're only able to do everything they do through the 14th Amendment. And it's because people just go with it. People don't know the law. And you know who's really supposed to know the law above everybody else? Law enforcement. Yeah, <laughs> you would think. <laughs> And they have no idea. So it's up to us if we want to come to a, uh, some kind of resolution to this situation in this country. It's going to require educating the officers. We discussed the difference last night between ignorance and nescience, right? Okay. They, there is an organization in this country called the Bar Association that was never granted any kind of constitutional authority. Right there, 14th Amendment, equal protection law or tool of usurpation, right? What this is, so we just discussed the difference between that, what law is and equity. Well, if you go down to where President Andrew Johnson's veto message is, listen, to this is the most, one of the most powerful things anybody can truly understand. See, I'm trying to find it's that. It's down. It's going to be down, 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 like a whole nother page. Yep. Way down, way down. It's going to start in the middle column. Right there. That's it. This here. If ever the American citizen, if ever the American citizen, right, should be left to the free, it says, if ever the American citizen should be left to the free exercise of his own judgment, it is when he is engaged in the work of forming the fundamental law under which he is to live. That work is his work. And 
Uh, it cannot properly be taken out of his hands. All this legislation proceeds upon the contrary assumption that the people of each of these states shall have not, no constitution except such as may be arbitrarily dictated by Congress and formed under the restraint of military rule. A plain statement of uh, facts makes this evident. Okay, and then you go up to the top of the next one. The rest of this is very, very good. Uh, he says, in all these states, there are existing constitutions formed in the accustomed way by the people. Congress, however, declares that these constitutions are not loyal and Republican and requires people to form them anew. So that's what the 14th Amendment did was completely eradicated law the people decided to live under and now force them to live under the law that Congress decided to, them to live under. And this was after they tore our country apart with a, an unconstitutional war. OK, and they tried to use slavery as the excuse. But the truth is, Lincoln said, if I could have if I could have preserved the union without freeing a single slave, I would have. Now, I hate to burst everybody's bubble who thinks he's a hero, but his concern was not the slaves. Right. Whether he had to free all of them or none of them, that wasn't his concern. It was just a tool used to divide um, the nation. OK. And and. Uh, what the South would, did with the secession was actually constitutionally lawful, right? Because those people, each of those states were their own country. This was a confederation of states, even under the Constitution. That's yeah. why that's, yeah, it was a confederation of states. You have two types of, of, of uh, union of, of states or countries, right? Because uh, states are countries. That's why the country mm -hmm. is called the state, right? So you have, two, you have two types of states. You have either a corporate or a confederate. OK. And in a corporate state, all of the states are subdivisions of the central uh, head of state, which in this case is the federal government under our corporatization. But in the original setup, even after the Constitution was ratified and for a long time, all the way up until the 14th Amendment was passed, we were still a confederation of states because the Constitution never got rid of the confederation. It built upon it. And that's why when you look in the very first uh uh, a sentence of the very first article, it says in order to form a more perfect union of these confederated states, now they want to have this very limited power federal government, right? So he says he formed them anew. And it, so this is this is uh, an orbit. This is like the United Nations telling us to get rid of our constitution. Right. And to adopt their constitution. Well, see, that all started to hit. That's that's what the whole fucking secession of southern states was about was the fact that he was in, he was assuming that corporate union shit through uh fucking executive orders. Lincoln was giving himself and the in the central government powers that they did not have. I mean this this tyrant he uh he suspended habeas corpus. He jailed his fucking detractors, people that, that criticized him in the press, he jailed him indefinitely in federal prisons. Uh, this guy was a fucking maniac, you Ooh. know, it, it's a shame that the he North was. Won. That's exactly yeah. right. And look at this. He's this right here is described and describing what this is where it brings up the issue of how slavery was used to foment this federal takeover, right? To, to facilitate this federal takeover it says what then in the, uh, in the opinion of Congress is necessary to make the constitution of a state loyal and Republican. The original act answers the question talking about the original act that proposed the 14th amendment that it is the universal uh, black suffrage, right? A question which the federal constitution leaves exclusively to the state. So it's so important to understand that the constitution, once the constitution was drafted and ratified, that was it. What was in, what was in the existing amendments prior to the 13th and 14th were the only, the only powers that the, the federal government had. The federal government took it upon themselves to take these new powers. That's why most of the states, and now what they don't teach you in history is that slavery was being abolished anyways. That's why I say the federal government hijacked this. The states, one by one, were choosing themselves to get rid of it. And the federal constitution does not say one thing or another about blacks. This, this situation was always left up to the state. So people think that the constitution, the federal constitution, Right. Says something about blacks and, and not, you know, prohibited and that they needed the 14th Amendment in order to have rights. No, they didn't. They just needed the, the people of each state to let them go because there's nothing. What it says right here about non free people. And I'll show you it's in sections, two. Right. Well, first, before we even go to that, look at all these states that didn't ratify. There were only 37 states in the union. 
and it required three fourths of a, mm. a majority vote in order to ratify this amendment. So what did the federal government do? They excluded, they excluded almost half of the states that were in the union at that time from even being a part of the ratification process. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mr. B uh, says here, so why not run for state office and change the laws and eliminate the 10th Amendment? Perhaps you slept through civics class. It takes a hell of a lot to we're not even eliminate an amendment to the Constitution. That's we're not even, it, And it doesn't matter because everything, no. like we talked about at the beginning of this video, everything after this unlawful usurpation is fruit of the poisonous tree. OK, and I'm going is, to is I'll show you I'll show you exactly what it says about uh, about there's a couple interesting things right in the very beginning of the uh, Mr. B. Again, the South didn't have a chance of winning. This is where you're losing your whole thing. Right, bro. OK, they weren't trying to win. They didn't go to war with anyone. No, they the didn't. North, the Union states went illegally. And unconstitutionally against the states that had seceded from the union, which was their right to do. Okay, that's what you're, they they said. Look, Governor Letcher, who was the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia at the time of secession, said, "We mean you no harm. We just wish to be left alone. We do not. We're not going to attack you." But also know this, if you try to go through Virginia to attack any of the other states, we will stop you. So what's the first thing this asshole does? He raises up an army to try to capture the rail yard at Manassas and got their asses fucking stomped. So the South could have sustained had they kept it a defensive war. It wasn't until they turned it into an aggression toward the North that they lost their ass. They didn't have the resources for that kind of an operation. Well, there, and there is not only that, but the fact that what Lincoln was doing was a massive overreach, overreach of, of federal power. And, um, and that was the exact, the reason that they, the main reason that they, all these states uh, rejected the 14th amendment is because they knew that that was, that's a slippery slope. And it ended us up where we're at today, where Mr. Chase Allen ended up dying just for standing on what was right. Right. So this places us under the, like he, like president Johnson said, the arbitrary legislation of Congress, it places us up instead of recognizing and just agreeing to not infringe upon our natural rights. So when a cop, so that's the whole point of this. In order to enter into a contract in this country under common law, it requires mutual and informed consent, mutual informed consent. And it has to be a conscionable contract, which means both parties have to receive a benefit. Once you enter into that contract willingly, knowingly and with mutual consent, then you can end up in a uh, jurisdiction of equity. Right. OK. And there has to be benefit received by both parties. So we, we kind of went through a lot of this shit last night on your stream and we kind of really showed exactly what this is. But what I wanted to focus on more in this today is that there are these open charges. I, I You got something you're wanting to put up here, Taylor. Yeah, I was. I just wanted to show this real quick, right? Is that this is all the United States says about anybody who is not free. And I also want to show the difference between a... Uh, uh, I'll show you real quick. So right here, it's it's talking about section two says that uh, um, representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states, okay, which may be included within this union according to the respective numbers. Now this is how they determine the numbers, okay, uh, of each state, which shall be determined by adding the whole number of free persons. So this means free persons represented a whole number. And now, including those bound to service for a term of years, this shows you that people who serve this sentence right here shows you that people who serve in any kind of public office technically are not free people. But for the purpose of voting, they're going to be, be considered a free person. They're actually public servants. And that's what those federal citizens are now also up here. So and it's but uh, hold on, finish this thought. So free persons are a whole number. And they're going to make the exception for people bound by uh, terms of service, right, uh, for years. But they're going to let them be included under free persons. And they add this provision. Anything, every word is chosen carefully because this is a contract. So 
the reason they add this is because ordinarily somebody who's bound to service for a term of years is not considered free. They're a servant of the public. They have agreed to serve. So why do we call them leaders? Okay. And now we go down here and it says that uh, three fifths of all other persons, meaning anybody who is not a free person, okay, is mm. just considered other person. And this could be anybody. This could be anybody of any ethnicity anywhere ever, right? Right. And well, we, it's, it's basically more proof that we're all just fucking slaves of this system. That's what it, they've written it out to be. No, the other person's meant to be anybody that was under, say, indentured servitude or slavery or any whatever state that they were in other than free. They were considered three fifths. It doesn't say, oh, black people are three fifths of a person. It doesn't say that. Right. And also the reason it says it, it's phrased this way is because it left the the determination of what to do with that that situation that was going on. It left that up to the people of each state, respectively, through the 10th Amendment. And what they don't teach you in the history books is each state, even in the South, were in the in the in the process of getting rid of that situation like that was already going on. And so they like every other thing that they do nowadays, they've seen that movement going on within the states. And Lincoln saw it as a perfect opportunity to hijack that movement yeah. in order to to grab a federal overreach of power unconstitutionally and get public support for it. Does that sound familiar? And the last thing I'm going to show, because I know you want to talk about the charges, is this right here. Look how they refer to people who live in a state. Inhabitant of the state. Right. So the representative who shall have attained the age of 25 years and been seven years a citizen of the United States. So he had to willingly you could be an inhabitant of the state and not be a citizen of the United States. And now even the term here, the United States, right, refers to the, each of the several states. Right. right. Uh, so you actually had to have taken upon uh, taken citizenship status. OK, you had to have taken citizenship status for at least seven years. Right. Um, and then it says that uh, you shall not be for your term. You shall not be considered an inhabitant of the state. No, because you're going to be a resident. OK, you're going to be a resident. And resident ha residency has a completely different meaning than inhabitant or even citizen. Like if you're a citizen of Michigan or a citizen of uh, Virginia, then you are a native a person to that state and you're a native, you're considered native. You're not a re resident. You're an inhabitant. You are an inhabitant of that state. The reason they use the term resident is because the 14th amendment, the very first line establishes dual jurisdiction. Okay. It establishes dual, uh, dual jurisdiction and, and ropes everybody into uh, this new corporate uh, structure. Cause remember we went from Confederate structure to corporate structure during the civil war. That's what happened. We went from a, a national confederate structure where each state was its own nation into a corporate structure and then they cast this big blanket net of, of jurisdiction claiming oh well now you're a jurisdiction of our central federalized government and you just reside in what was formerly your country they commonly they commonly call this uh reconstruction period yes and that's exactly what it was it was a complete reconstruction it was a complete re but the original way that it was set up was designed to and it's so important you don't need that piece of paper the declaration of independence the the constitution in this country you don't need any of those pieces of paper to tell you what your rights are what you can and can't do we never drafted any of those to give us rights we drafted those to tell the government that we were hiring essentially or that we were forming for ourselves what they were allowed to do and that's it you're not allowed to do anything that's not listed in this you you cannot do it well that all being said that's all well and good but they're shooting motherfuckers right okay? so law they're straight up fucking murdering people so that brings me to this point is the 14th amendment if people know that it's illegitimate so take the officer if he's a law enforcement and he's educated on what the difference between law and equity if they say go arrest that person he doesn't have registration how is that a crime well, he needs that registration. Wait a minute. Are you trying to get me to extort somebody, a law abiding citizen? Are you trying to get me to extort somebody? Because that sounds like a crime, not the registration. That sounds like a crime. Mm -hmm. If that person chooses to register their vehicle, if they choose to do that and contract with the state, then fine. But that's their choice. That's their natural right. 
but you trying to force me to make them enter that contract, that's a crime. And the problem is law enforcement does not see it that way because they don't know that's what it is. They've blended, they blurred the lines between law and equity. Well, I don't think police have ever known anything like that. They're just the enforcement aspect, uh, order followers, basically. Um, well, to expect them to know any of this would be to have to uh, dig from a pool of higher IQ people and higher IQ people are not going to be down for stepping over onto the rights of people. So who are they going to hire? They're going to hire those that we have. Now, the ones that do realize it are then at the mercy of what I call uh, the golden handcuff. You see, Um if I don't do this, I no longer receive a paycheck. I've invested my life into this work and I have all these benefits and insurance and I have to take care of my family and I have a mortgage and a car payment and all this other shit. Um, you see, that's that's another thing that you run into there, too. Um, so, I mean, like like I say, through all this crazy shit, what we got to do is get that. I don't think you're ever going to get it into the awareness of the system that's trying to fuck you. Okay. Well, with this charges, these impeachment charges, look at what Luma Tommy says. Look at what Luma Tommy, says. What what Luma Tommy says. Look at that. What? I'm okay with mandatory. So you're okay with forcing me or with allowing the government to extort me, right? And force me to purchase uh, protection from a private company. You know, that's what the mafia did, right? Pay us protection or else. And that's what the government does pay them for protection or else. And the, and the banks, the same banks that have enslaved us own the insurance company. Insurance is a major part of the banking system. You sound like a dumbass. You sound like a complete and utter dumbass when you say something like that. If you want to have insurance to protect your property, go ahead. All contracts should be voluntary. That's all. There is no, yeah. no other um, excuse. I mean, there's no other... <laughs> I mean, you can't force people to go into a contract, but this is the thing. We need to get this fucking shit out. There are open charges right now mm -hmm. um, against the, is this where it starts right here? And it's in the congressional record from 1933, May 23rd. You got to look in the house. I'm going to put the link up in the chat right now. Um, so you can go to this if you want to. It's, it's a hell of an indictment. Um, and we are going to, uh, look at a little bit of that, but we need to get this. This has just been sitting in the judiciary. Okay. They're just passing it over. It's not it being addressed And these charges that come about on some of this. Let me go in here. He says, uh, uh, I charged them jointly and severely, severally with having unlawfully substituted Federal Reserve currency and other irredeemable paper currency for gold in the hands of the people after the decision to repudiate the Federal Reserve currency and the national currency was made known to them, and with having thus obtained money under false pretense. And then each one of these paragraphs is another charge. And this shit, let me tell you something. If there was any of you charged with this shit that you will read in here and you'll want to go to page 4056 and be sure you're looking at may 23rd 1933 you would be buried under a fucking prison never to be heard from again mm -hmm. Absolutely. this is a list of crimes that are insane and this is the reason that we're under this shit where you have to go have a registration for your car, a special tag, have to have this driver's license bullshit. You, all your, uh, everything is all stems from this open charge right here. And we need to get a petition going. I need to get with somebody that knows how to make fucking petitions and whatnot. Um, and I think we can do it electronically. I know there's some of you out there, anybody that's re listening to the replay of this or whatever, um, get with us so we can figure this out. We absolutely well, can draft. I can draft if we the don't get the charges addressed. If we can make more and more people aware that these are still open charges, they've been sitting there for 90 fucking years. Yeah. 90 years. Yeah. The people involved, the names that are involved in here, these people are long dead. 
These people are long dead. This was almost a century ago, and we've still been under this bullshit. And this was only a few years, 20 years after the Federal Reserve Act was passed in the first place. We'll and already, it. boom. But what they do? Because the Bar Association has complete control over the judiciary, this is swept under. Because There's this no also shows that the bar is fucking illegal as well. There's no constitutional provision anywhere given the Bar Association authority over our judicial or any branch of our government at all. An exclusive authority. That's what they have obtained is exclusive. You can't do any of this until you go through us and get a license. Yeah. And so here's where we come down to is these these order followers. Okay, we got these order followers. And like I said, they're not aware of this. They just know that. Cars have to have tag on back. If no tag on back, me pull over, me write ticket, me tow car, whatever. They have this little fucking thing that they do. They have no idea because it's just like in the in the movie, The Truman Show. We accept the reality that we're presented with, right? And from everyone's life, this is the reality. You know, it's just like, well, why do I have to have these things? Well, because it's written. That's why. That's how it's always been, you know. I will draft the petition, dude. We don't need somebody to draft the petition. Fuck that part of it. I will draft the petition. I'll start working on that. I got I'm busy tomorrow and Monday, and right after that, right. I'll start drafting that motherfucker, right? But here beyond that, the the important thing about the impeachment charges is that everything that's outlined by McFadden in those unanswered charges, the reason they're unanswered is because those actions he's outlining are what gave birth to this trust indenture securities and exchange system. It completely took over our monetary system and made our monetary system dependent on generating securities from creating attachments to us as commercial vessels, which completely removed our courts of law and our common law jurisdiction. And by the end of the 70s, we ended up with only courts of equity and commercial jurisdiction run by foreign corporations that are not even part of our government. They do not even work for our government, all these municipalities. So the states, after they sold out their own people, because the people did nothing about it, they sold off all their land and the people in it to private municipal govern government services corporation owned by private money powers across the pond there. Right. And then those government uh, services corporation to hire Gestapo police. And when I say law enforcement, I never meant police. I'm talking about sheriffs, sheriff's mm-hmm. deputies and United States marshals. Police are policy enforcers. OK, if you like to think of yourself as a law enforcer, then start enforcing law, not policy. Right, right. And then right. we'll refer to you properly. But right. you are a fucking road pirate if you're a police officer. OK, but a sheriff. 100% constitutional and sheriffs all around this country should be arresting state and federal politicians for this right here that we're presenting yeah. yeah, right now because they have broken the law. They have extorted every single person in this country and enslaved unlawfully every single person in this country, every single one. What are the so the sheriffs are supposed to be enforcing the law, but instead what they're doing is enforcing unconscionable contracts and assisting to extort innocent people okay an unconscionable contract is against the law because the law doesn't need to be legislated that's why they practice law the law what the difference between law and equity is the law can only be recognized it cannot be created or destroyed it can only be recognized and pointed out that's it right right that's why people practice law well see and this is what you run into is now we've got this like this recent incident here with uh mr allen in uh in utah where we've i mean this they straight up just because you got to really look at this what was this guy doing that was wrong nothing he wasn't doing anything that was causing any loss injury or harm to anyone they and so something that tells me a little bit more about this too is that you can't tell me that if these people have already dealt with the police in that town and that county before, that they would be, they're more aware than they let on as to how this stuff actually works, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also the fact that this town has a population just just slightly above 24,000 people. That's small, okay? The first thing that they trotted out in the news article was that the they, the whole family had these ideals and they've been in court before with this shit. 
so these cops knew and That's i believe that he was targeted and i believe that they pushed it out into the media to discourage people see what happens see what happens if you don't toe the line you could be killed and nobody looking at the most important thing this fucking kid was murdered brutally murdered his his life ended in just a few seconds boom gone right over a goddamned little fucking piece of paper that's what people are not looking at oh well he had a gun so so what? He had a gun. Everybody on the scene had a fucking gun. The mm -hmm. only ones who were ready to use it were the fucking badged enforcers. Yep. And and that's the and, and that's exactly so in the actual criminals in this instance, right? Mm -hmm. Were the other people with the guns because they're attempting to extort him. Yes. No yeah. question. If you end up in court, right, you're not in an Article Three court. Article Three courts are de jure court. You are in an Article One court sanctioned by Congress and ran ultimately by the IRS and the banking system and the Securities mm -hmm. and Exchange Commission. Mm -hmm. Do you realize what these these Article One courts are doing on, on behalf of the United States or under the jur maritime jurisdiction of the United States? These Article One courts are so you get trust instruments. You go sign a driver's license contract because you have to. Right. They lead you to believe you have to. You go register your property. Right. Because they because they lead you to believe you have to. So you enter into these unconscionable contracts. What are those contracts doing? They're taking your property rights and your property and your right to travel and they're collateralizing it so that a trust can be created. OK. And then the police, these policy enforcers can create attachments to the value generated by that trust. And they can siphon money out of it by generating bonds and bills of exchange in the court, right? So as soon as you go to court mm -hmm. for a civil infraction or say you get a warrant, say you get a warrant, right? What, what comes with a warrant? A bond, right? Mm -hmm. A bond. That bond is a valuable interest-bearing instrument that they trade and exchange through their private judges associations. So they are farming you for securities. They are hoping to get a hold of you to create an attachment to you. To your legal identity, your legal uh, entity, identification number, right. you generate securities. They're farming you. So right. you say, I want an Article Three court now to redress this, this, this violation of my natural rights and law. I need an Article Three court now, stat. You are trying to enforce an unconscionable contract on me. Well, you are trying to all well and good, but look at these fucking goons, what they did. They you know what I'm saying? Death. Yeah, this is and this what? shit's going to come to a head one way or the other, and they get to choose how it does. So That's everybody, what I know. Uh, everybody, if you're if you're, be careful. There, you know, this has got some. It's kind of graphic. Um, but I want you to really look at this and see what the fuck this guy's really doing. That would cause oh, we got to kill this guy. You know, this is just I, I, it just blows me away. Of course, they don't turn on any audio until they. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, I'm off Farmington Police. The reason for the stop today is there's no registration on your vehicle. You don't need registration or don't answer questions. All righty. Davis, Fox 21, can you have a couple more heading my way? Is this back window roll down? I just want to make sure that you're the only one in the vehicle. So here's the deal, man. I'm stopping you because there's no registration on your vehicle, and I'm requesting your identification. Okay? You are detained at this time, and you are not free to leave. Are you going to provide me your identification? I don't answer questions. Okay, so I'm going to take that as a no. Now, first off, he doesn't have to provide really any uh, anything because he's not broken any law. Am I... I'm correct on that. What law did this kid break? No, that's absolutely right. What he did was he breached an equitable uh, or what is what is proposed to be an equitable agreement, right? Contract, essentially. But there's no equity there. It's absence of equity. Right, right. right. Let me do something here real quick. He violated a contract that he did not even know he was under, which makes it unconscionable right at its very foundation. Right. Well, he knew he was uh, that people were under it. And that's why he said, I'm not getting under it. I'm not doing that. But people right. have no idea that they're under that. He said, no, dude, I'm not going to buy. Fuck that. 
Right. Why would I give you my property and then pay you for the privilege of using it for your benefit? Fuck you. How does that sound? They're getting really good at editing their body camera. Yeah. Pretty soon you're going to see a guy with one of those little take two click, <laughs> you know. Fucking. That you're not going to provide me your identification. Is that is that the route we're going? Or would you like to provide your identification to me? And we can have a conversation. We can discuss the laws that you're breaking. And then we can go from there. If you want my identification, you will be under duress and you accept the surety and trusteeship over it. You, you said, do you accept the surety and trust ownership over it? You won't be responsible for any debts that you're trying to incur here. Okay, so I'm not okay. trying to incur any debts or anything. I'm trying to investigate why your vehicle doesn't have any registration. 1692, you are trying to incur a debt and legal action for something okay. that's not allowed. Okay. And under so here's, here's the, traveling is a federally protected activity. Okay. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And what I'm telling you is that you do not have an option to identify yourself. I do. You are lawfully required to identify yourself. So you can provide. I. I can't hear you. Can anybody else hear you? Sorry, I was muted. Yeah. I not, he said he's lawfully required to show his fucking idea. It's not lawfully required at all. What law? No. No. I mean, unless you've broken the law, there's no reason to fucking ID. You see? Somebody who watched my show last night, real quick, I just want to say, asked me to clarify the trust indenture a little bit more, right? Yeah. And I spent like 45 minutes, like really simplifying and laying it out so I can explain what he's denying afterwards, if that's OK with you, because it's your show. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You can provide your identification to me and we can have a conversation about the laws that you've broken or you can fail to identify it to me and we can go that route, too. I'm perfectly OK with either way you want to go. But the direction that this inner encounter goes is a hundred percent in your hands. Sir, Utah Code, United States Code, okay. is a corporate policy okay. which you have to be contracted and to be required to follow it. Unless okay. you can provide me a contract with my wet ink signature on it saying that I'm required to follow it. Okay. Then there's so do you want to do you want to identify yourself to me or do you want to go a different route? Wonderful. Do you have a driver license as well? I am not giving you jurisdiction. Okay. Do not stop. And do not detain. He said, I'm not giving you jurisdiction. And apparently his passport has a notation on it. Do not detain. Do not. You are not allowed to stop. Can you license an animal? I, I didn't see what you just tried to show me. Can you show that to me again? <laughs> What's this? Actually, only license. Can you, can you license your own dog? <laughs> Oh, well, see, there's the thing right there. In order to license something, license is permission to do something illegal. Well, even beyond that, you can't license living things. You can only license trust property and and uh, fictional corporate thing. Trust that licensing is a is a commercial term that only deals in fiction. Yeah. But that, that's that's how the normal folks should think whenever the an officer says, "Oh, you got your license." Okay. Fuck, can I license you? Well, they can only can I license, license you to do the right thing today. They can only license your yeah. dog because they can license you, is my point. Well, there again. Because they say they can, right? Right. There again, you got to get into the whole idea of what is a license. A license is permission to do something else, wise dictated is illegal, right? So, what they've done there is make the act of commerce on the highway driving illegal and so therefore you have to obtain permission or a license to do it Training killing animal killing the king's deer yeah. without his permission is illegal so you have to get a hunting license and specifically for whatever kind of animal that it is you're hunting you see that's Dog. that's all the license is is permission to do something that's elsewise dictated is illegal it's all via the Trading with the Enemy Act, man, that they amended. Yeah. yeah. 
100%. Like, like your double knot spy has a license to kill. Okay. Because it's illegal to kill people, but he has permission <laughs> to do so. You see? Right. Yeah. Here's, here's what I'm Say, I have you. a quick question. 007. 007. <laughs> What's your question, Nubs? Um, I've heard you talk about trading with the enemies at before. Does that parallel? I, I did some research a couple of years back about the fur documents, 1938 or 39, one of the two. Um, but basically, the document or a piece of paper that every agent of the state must sign stating that they are a foreign agent in fact yes. are you familiar with it? and if so how would that apply to is, this and do all police officers have to sign it or is it just some or how does that work well because we're still under the emergency war powers of the when the, the corporate united states declared war on the confederate the confederation of states essentially and then that's just ultimately evolved so when when you are uh well let's watch this video and we'll get into that let's, let me let me let's i don't want to disrupt the flow of his show right here's what i'm telling you right my apologies will you hand that to me so i can read it you want me to look at it through this tiny crack in your window you're not going to hand it to me? If I hand this to you, accept trusteeship and surety, and you are obligated to... Sure, I'll accept, I'll accept yeah. trusteeship if you just hand me the document so I can identify who you are because you're required by state law. I am not Thank you so much, Mr. Chase Allen. That is not me. That is a piece of plastic paper. So you have a fraudulent passport? No. Wonderful. Look, he didn't even let him fucking answer. So you have a fraudulent passport? No. Because he even said, he said, that's a piece of plastic and paper. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, step out of the car for me. No. Sir, step out of the vehicle no. right now. I am not required. To. Now, you see this bird over here? He was already on this side of the car. He's looking in the car. You mean to tell me he didn't see a weapon on this kid's hip? Isn't he talking into his microphone right now, too? He's probably like, like we're about to murder this dude. Yep. Step out of this vehicle right now. And we're going to have an issue where you're step out of the car right now. Step out of the car. We're going to break the window and pull you out. Step out of the car. Go, 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 go. That dude that makes me scared. Fast fire, fast fire. Sarge, step back. Sarge, step back. Sarge, step back. Okay, hey, it's Fox 40. Where's the police officer? We have shots fired. We have suspect down. Send us more. Show us your fucking hands. Show us your hands. Don't move. Show us your hands. Here, I'm going to go. Keep them on gun. Keep them on gun. How's he supposed to do Keep that? Okay, I'm coming up. Coming up. Close in here. Close in here. Yeah, he's gonna, you know, stop resisting, stop resisting. If this doesn't infuriate every single person that watches this, is everybody good? Yeah, has anybody good. didn't make a hit? Did he shoot? I don't have any fucking idea. My fucking gun jammed, so I had to drop my mag. Disappointed because his gun jammed and he had to drop his mag. Looks like tyranny and treason to me. Did you hear that motherfucker, man? Mm -hmm. He was disappointed acting. Oh, he fucking gun jammed and I had to drop my mag. Yeah, because there wasn't enough goddamn bullets shot at this fucking kid. In the tone of the voice. Like, fucking really? God. Could this not be considered an act of war? This is 100% an act of war. It is. There's no question. So about why that. is it? I was going to say. Like I'm. Don't get me wrong. Like, like I'm not exactly. advocating that anybody should do anything. But what's the difference is if we did the same thing in reverse? Well, no, we're not even going to get on that subject. But what yeah. I will uh, say, that's fair enough. 
This That's what they're to... using as an excuse to do this shit. They're claiming there's a yeah, war. It's, it's going to take, it's gonna take us in numbers. This is yeah, going to take us in numbers to keep doing it. Long time. All of this, this That's the act of war. What, so, what, what is your emotional content when this shit happens? The, the original, like he asked. Right? The, That's what it boils right. down to. What's your emotional content when it happens? Are you Are, tired of one, being taxed and fined and fucked every time you turn around? It's one thing to watch. It's one thing to watch somebody die in combat. I okay. It's completely something else to watch somebody murdered in cold blood. Yeah. And beyond that, it, that was an act of war. But this war has been waging since the Civil War. And people don't even understand that that's what's been going on. If you read Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, it says no state shall make anything but gold and silver legal tender in the payment of debt. So how is it that the state can authorize them to use debt instruments and 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 align with Congress, right? And allowing them to isn't the state because the state was taken over by is, federal, isn't the state same as country or no? No. This well, yes, it is, yeah, it but is. not anymore. Is what it's so now state when you see it in the all capital letters, it's an administrative department of just one state, right? So what they did was they corporatized. All right, that's what that's what I was clarifying for the chat. Yeah, yeah, I was clarifying that for chat. Does it make you know? So now it's the administrative uh, department of one state, whereas before the Civil War, before the Fourteenth Amendment, which is why Andrew Johnson vetoed it. It was a confederation of states, all of them, the North and South. So they, that's that's why they confuse you by calling the South the Confederacy. The entire nation was a confederacy. Even during the Civil War, the Union up top, it was still, it, well, that's what happened is that the entire confederacy was Detroit, destroyed. And so the, the Northern states decided to go ahead and corporatize with the federal and give over their sovereignty to federal territorial jurisdiction. Okay, which means the original ju constitutional jurisdiction uh, that is there is under siege and has been under siege and continued yeah. to be under yeah. siege since then. Okay, and so this so is everybody was running from tyranny since day one. Well, yeah, basically well, from from the Civil War. Yeah, we all been running from tyranny from day one. Basically, well, we've been we've been fighting the banks from day one of this country. We've been fighting because all of this is under the banks. And that's the mm -hmm. most important thing to realize. The central banking system oh. is is the ones who are buying. Yes, they finance this. They control it. And it's look at what happened. This, this whole thing is done under the, the from the establishment of the Federal Reserve was their final home stretch to get in the securities and exchange system established. And it was all done under the Federal Reserve. OK, which was a, a it's a privately owned central bank. And they collateral they they forced the United States to collateralize its its citizenry in order to issue notes instead of certificates. See, that's how they got it with the quasi legitimacy lawfulness at first. It was gold and silver certificates, so the states could authorize it, right? And still maintain the appearance of legitimacy and keep it hidden from the public, right? But really, the entire time this was the intention was to be where we're at today. Was to be where we're at today. Wait, did you want to finish the video? Yeah, well, I'm gonna. I'll just finish through this here, and then I got okay. another one to show you. Here you go. Here you go. Wise man. Wise man. Yep. Yo, God. What's up, brother? Dave B. How you doing, Dave B? The pearls up in here too. Okay. Well, we're just shooting around, uh, looking at. Yeah, we got plenty of bullets. I know, I know, I know. But let's just check and medical first. Okay. We got multiple bullets in the chest. Hey, we got other people. Come on. I got you, dude. Hey, he's yours. You got him? Uh, I shot two. Yeah, I shot two. Yeah, you guys are separate. Hey. Hey. Are you okay? Yeah. They ask you. Am I going to turn this off? Am I going to turn this oh, off? He says, Am I going to turn this off? The fuck? Done for now. Uh, I'm good. Want to sit in my car? No. Hey Kelly, can you grab my phone so I can call my wife, or your phone just so I can call her? Uh, do you know our number? Yeah. Come sit on my seat. Okay. Why isn't he sitting on the curb in handcuffs 
like the rest of us. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. This is. I mean, this is this is just sickening. I got another one here too that I was going to put up. Uh, can I explain for about. maximum effect if everybody on the panel is okay? Can I kind of explain that trust and denture thing yeah, simply, yeah, quickly? All right. So in the instance, like I keep bringing up on my channel and stuff, and that this is a great analogy. Real quickly, we're going to simplify it and then break down trust. Uh, a man wants to come from England to the colonies, right, say in the 1700s, has no money, makes an arrangement with the ship captain, says, hey, listen, I'll enter into a trust indenture. I'll labor for seven years, okay, which will equal the value of this voyage. We'll sign that value is equal to this voyage. We'll agree upon that. And then we'll draft up a contract and, and you'll give me the you'll give me the ride and I'll give the labor. Right. Well, so that contract's drafted up. Right. And as soon as that contract's drafted up and that trust agreement centered into, there's two titles created. OK, there's a legal title and an equitable title. OK, so the legal title is the right to use the property. OK, it's the right to use the property for the benefit of. of I had the exact definition of the uh, the legal title. Uh, the legal title of a property refers to legal ownership, which comes with the right to control the trust property in compliance with the trust indenture. An equitable title, which is beneficial, okay? The equitable title is the beneficial title, gives the person the right to enjoy the benefits that come with ownership of the trust property. Okay, so the guy who's going to work, he owns his body, obviously, but when he enters a trust indenture, he gets handed a legal title to himself essentially does that make sense you get the legal title to yourself so now you get to you, you get to, obviously you're going to use it operate the property right manage it that's called being a trustee okay but everything that you're doing in the use and management of that property is for the benefit of the person who owns the equitable title so there's two titles in the, every time in the in a trust and there's two titles there's a, if there's one title certificate of title in a trust indenture there is a mirror of it that that evidence is the beneficiary the benefits of that trust okay so we'll take it a step further that that contract uh the beneficial title of that contract is now a valuable instrument okay negotiable instrument right and uh, it's a commercial instrument and so now the ship captain would either have to keep this guy on his ship for seven years right which the guy doesn't want to do and would probably be stipulating the conscious on and so forth so or or when he gets to the colonies, he's going to sell that equitable uh, or that. Yeah, the equitable, equitable, beneficial title to that indenture to a farm owner. OK, and so now say that he used the say that he used the uh, two years of the title. And he said, you know, you just kept the guy on his ship for two years. Right. And then he was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go sell this title so you can get to the colony, start to get settled. And he goes and. And now that 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 commercial instrument is worth less than it originally was. Right. Or he could sell it immediately and give somebody a bargain. And you know what I mean? So but the point is, is the beneficial the beneficial uh, title is what's valuable. The equitable title is what's valuable when you get legal titles. So we'll take it now to this this case here when you go register. OK, say like when you register your child and that's what you do, you register your child with the county and they give you a birth certificate. That's not an equitable title. That's a legal title. They give you legal title to your child. Okay. And then when your child gets old enough, you give him his own legal title. But all this time, the the, the corporate municipal gover government uh, services entity is holding the equitable title and collecting on the benefit. And that's why you have to pay everything. That's why they want you to register and all this. Now, the difference between us and the guy who got the voyage, right, was he knowingly entered into that contract, right? And beyond that, he received benefit. That equitable title didn't actually become equitable until the ship captain delivered on his end of the contract. The ship captain had to reach the colonies for that title, to, for that paper to actually be valuable. Otherwise, he used up all the, the value in that title, and now he's obligated to get that guy to the colonies because otherwise he's the one under an indenture, right? A, a mortgage. So that's the whole thing. And now this is all another word that creates a, a trust indenture is a mortgage. And as we went over on my channel last night, it's in congressional record. Okay. March 9th, 1933, page 83, second paragraph, first full paragraph on the left-hand column says that the dollar represents 
a mortgage on all the homes and other property of all the people in the country. Okay. What that means is that's a lien on your property rights because as long as these notes are issued, that mortgage continues, that trust indenture exists, and there's a split title. There is a split title. That's what they mean by collapse the trust. Right. But anyways, that's I just wanted to clear that up so everybody understands. Now watch when he says, no, I don't want to give you jurisdiction. No, I don't want to register my property and receive legal title to use it for your benefit. No. And I don't have to. It's unconscionable. I'm aware of this contract now and it's stupid. Who would enter into it? Who would ever enter into that? And what benefit do we get for doing it? If you go register your vehicle, what benefit do you get? You That you didn't already have. Are you have. familiar with? Are you familiar with truth and lending? The truth and lending act. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any equivalent to the truth and lending act? Well, um, so yeah. The, well, we yeah, can, you know, what? does that make sense? Yes. And that is the, the truth and lending act. Yeah. And then there's the, uh, the equitable practice or, uh, what is it? The, the fair, uh, debt, I'll prepare a presentation on this, but yes, that all ties in. But the whole point is we don't even want to use their system. Yeah, you can hem them up on this, but we don't even want to. All of this is the fruit of a poison tree. That's what the whole right. point of this video, my video last night, all of this is all the fruit of a poison tree. And that's very true. I used to sell mortgage and that's, you don't want to enter into a mortgage <laughs> like you really don't. Where you did when you got a birth certificate. So you entered into a mortgage. No, I'm saying like as far as a house like a house note, like right, what I'm talking about, mortgage. truth and lending, the whole nine yards. That is literally, it is truly debt slavery. Yeah, that's, it's a second mortgage. That one is because you already been mortgaged. Sure. And it's cured by the first mortgage of your birth certificate and social security. So I know what I'm talking about there. This I'm still learning. So <laughs> it should be easy for you to understand if you already have that base of knowledge. Fair. Definitely coexist together. I can definitely see the correlations. It's the same. It's all the same. It's all the I'm same system. Twenty-five-year-old kids uh, have, a, have an understanding of that stuff. That they, they Chase Allen, he really did his homework, you know. Mm -hmm. El Perro. Yeah, he did. That's greetings, everybody. I just want to bring a couple notes to the table. I heard you guys talking about the. Uh, Civil War earlier over the South and everything and and these titles and all that. I wanted to clarify the Civil War. Um, you had the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. And at that time, you had the Louisiana Territory. You had the Oregon country up in the Northwest. And then you had Spain owned all the rest. And this is before the, the Texas War and all that. And um, at that time, it was a very important port at the Port of Louisiana. Okay, that was French territory still, and that, that's why it was the purchase of Louisiana. Napoleon couldn't uh, finance the war he was in at the current time, so he sold Louisiana to finance the war he was in. At that time, America purchased that Louisiana portion with the intent on, re on covering all the area west and south. The importance of that Louisiana port in 1803, as opposed to Civil War 1860, and then the Panama Canal in the early 1900s. And now we have 2006, we have the Organization of American States, where they did yep. successfully go down to the south. And now you have American states. So when you claim this American state national, there's a problem you still haven't corrected the proper paperwork because you're not dealing with the proper people. I keep trying to convince people that. Well, here's the, the point, point that we're making, El Piro, is fuck the proper process because it's all fruit of the poison tree. If they claim to, if they claim Correct. powers from our originating documents, then what they have done is unlawful according to the documents that even they even derive power from. So fuck their system. Well, that's, that's what I keep trying to tell everybody. They claim that they're operating on a trust, but a trust at most can only operate on about 5,000 people maximum. That's right. at the very maximum. Well, they it subdivide only operate amongst municipal people. corporations. That's how they do it. They subdivide it amongst municipal, uh, municipal government services corporations. Right. Municipal government services. Then they got all those other 
entities underneath it that disqualifies that because you can't then subdivide that entity and say they're right. all benefits in this part, but this guy's liable. But they do it anyway. Exactly. And that's the title yeah. importance. Now, they, now that you've got the Panama Canal, and then in 2006 was the Electronic Records Act. Now your titles are being electronically transferred. This is the importance of just developing your own site. Well, the importance of calling these fuckers out on their treason, the invalid, the the uh, the invalidity of the 14th Amendment and these impeachment charges alone right now should rally every person in this country behind the death of Chase. Right. And we should be demanding action. Let's start with the impeachment charges. Let's start with that. You know what, El Piro? Do you want to draft the petition? Because you're a smart well, motherfucker. Right? Well, see, the problem is that, that we can't do it on that scale. It's a one by one situation. The writ of mandamus. It doesn't matter. Writ of mandamus means they've already got the the, the body in, in custody. Yeah, and you're, wanting them, you're demanding them to hand over the, the, the body. But what we do, and the whole point of this, and I want to keep reminding everybody, is not to actually accomplish something lawfully, but to get people to get off their asses and demand our country back. And we can get attention to it by even bringing it that far. If we take it to the Supreme Court and we're like, you need to get the Senate to investigate these fucking impeachment charges now because everything that is this is securities and exchange system that has spawned from the the the, the events in 1933 that McFadden has outlined has led to the death of Chase Miller. Yeah, but you still can't do that at that court level. That's still we can do whatever we want because where is the power inherent? You have to do it on the international level, brother. Where is the that power inherent? You're dealing with the Universal Postal Union. You have to and bring the five ministers to of the world world affairs. So tell US. us what document would be the best one to bring attention to all this fraudulent activity. Yeah. Well, the law have. of nations, which you spoke of earlier, the principles, otherwise known as the principles of the law of nature, that okay. goes, that's the supporting document of both the Treaty of Bern, which protects your literary and artistic works, and the Treaty of Friendship and Peace. So For let me ask you, so you and I, we can converse on this and we say shit that a lot of people don't understand, right? So how do we take this, put it in a language that the average person can understand of how they're being fucked, right? And enslaved, including law enforcement officers, everybody, because there's a lot of good law enforcement officers. There yeah. are that don't want, don't know that what they're doing is awful. Everyone that carries an ID in your pocket and you hey. haven't taken an oath of office to be a member. Why of should anybody office? have to change that language? Hey, can, can, you, hey, can, dude. You, can you let a man speak? It's heard up, man. I'm interested in what you have to say. I'm sure well, my dad is and some of the audience. Yeah. So, yeah. so anybody that, ha that carries one of those IDs, you're subject to an oath of office. That means you have to have a political side. It means you have to have a political election. OK, if you're not part of the political body, that voter registration is showing that separation. But in that voter registration, the wording says that you're accepting an oath. Today, the, when you go get a driver's license, they have you sign an oath. They're doing this underhandedly. If you don't intentionally write a handwritten statement yourself of your intent, None of it matters. Okay, but how do we take this out of having to use their system and bring public awareness to a mass of people that can instigate change because and initiate change because these impeachment charges are standing open? That's a huge thing. So even before how fucked up we got, like I said earlier in the stream, th this right here that McFadden outlines is the, the fruit of a poison already poisonous tree. The, the, right. the tree was already poisonous, and then it's even more poisonous. <laughs> and, and, so, and, again, and again, it's because. The state ceded their jurisdiction to the to wash to the United States. The United States is located in Washington D.C. Washington D.C. has no we, statehood. We That's the simplest way you can go. It's okay. all corporate. It's all corporate. So, so if you want to go against them, you have to go in the corporate realm. That's the Postal Service. What postal can Board we regulate regulations and the United States Postal Service as what a can we draft? What can we draft that we can get people to sign their support for <laughs> that they have to pay attention to? That, that that they can, you can not you can draft you can draft just, just draft your you word draft. to everybody you, you speak to. to but you have to draft, that but you have to draft it to the right people right. not sports the postal regulatory commission which is a military yeah. event, and the united states postal service which is the registered agent of the trust okay so that's great information so that's where we take the document now which document format would be the best to use and be the most effective um whatever your 
you're dealing with a judicial element, in fact. So the mandamus, right? No, you have to do a judicial be. element. Monetary. Huh? Remember, folks, 12 we don't want them Monetary. Yes. We want them to deal with this in courts of law, not courts of equity, not commercial courts or title courts, none of those, right? right? That's, your, that's your postal court. Right. So we want to use something that's under like a common law writ of mandamus. And that may not be the most effective, but that's one of the best um, ones. It would, be, so it would be a, it would be a uh, deuces uh, tecum. A what? Deuces tecum. Deuces tecum? That's subpoena. Yeah, for gonna, subpoena How do you spell record? that? What's that mean, Piro? It it means, you're going to call forth the record. Okay. Now, when you call forth that record and it shows that you're not part of the military under the enumeration at birth, that you were falsely assigned an establishment of a corporate entity for that military purpose. Now, here's a question. So if now, is this something that you can sign more than one okay. person? Most definitely. Everybody that's been enumerated at birth under whatever nation. All under one document. Yep. Fantastic. How do you spell it? Because that's exactly the answer that me and my dad were both looking for. What? Subpoena deuces tecum. D U C E F. Tecum. T E C U M. Ask and you shall receive. Excellent. And that's what it means. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, pull pull forth, that bring forth the record. It means pull bring forth, forth the record. record. Gotcha. Bring forth the record. This is great. Are you guys in support of this? This. Uh, this idea? Are you behind it? Are you absolutely? Gonna... Yeah. You sign it? Absolutely. Wizard, I'll tell you what, man, you are a blessing to mankind. I like I like to do, man. It's like he's all, glory real, God, man. Guys, all glory goes to him, and I'm gonna tell you this is the reason I stick to the postal service. Scripture starts with post or post starts with scripture, post to post. Messenger shall run to messenger and shoe unto the king of Babylon that the city has fallen at the other end. It's scriptural. We're supposed to shoe on to the king of Babylon. I, he is falling. We are so the what, messengers of his destruction. Here's the plan that I propose is that w one of us uh, draft it. Right. And I'm more than happy to El Perro. I feel like is even more qualified to, but the most important thing, right. Is to, once we draft it, it's going to be written in the, the proper, uh, you know, jurisdiction, you know, law words. We're going to have to use the proper law words, which most people do not understand. Right. So we need to take and circulate this around all the channels once it's drafted and explain what it means. Explain. So this is what it says. This is what you're signing. And this is what that means to you. This is what's happening to you. Now, do you want to, this to stop? If you want what we just explained to stop, then sign that. Right? What do you guys think? I I like the idea, man. Perfectly. Um, okay. Then we go to the Constitution of the Universal Postal Union. It's an open offer. It's an open offer. It's in it's in the public venue, so you can accept it as your own micro nation. Again, I created my own site as a private foundation that might one day establish a new nation. So as a micronation, not yet quite organized, but in development stages. Well, you want I, our I nation deserve, back. Yeah, I deserve the same protections as a nation does. Well, we want our confederation of nations back. And with some changes, right. everybody's right. free. Everybody. It doesn't matter if you're black or a woman. It doesn't fucking matter. So we can take the silver lining of this uh usurpation and, and debt servitude of having brought awareness and, and support to those issues. And thank you for that. Now we want to go back to what we had and we'll amend the problems with it. It took all of this to figure out that's what was fucked up apparently. Right. Now that we figured that out, we want to go back to that and uh, have our individual Confederate States where all the power is inherent in the people. Okay. Right. Uh, I mean, and I don't mean just do we, the South. Do we really we, want to go back to that? Though, I mean, yes. and the reason well, I asked the question, hey, hear me out. The reason I asked the question is because that system itself has brought us to this point. Now, I know that the no, system it itself didn't. had Usurpation problems. Ignorance. You, the ignorance of the right. law has brought us to right. this point. Right. That's, that's the problems part. You know, like I, I acknowledge. Two things. Okay. Today's legal tender is defined 
as negotiable instruments. instruments. That's a huge problem. That was Second. forbidden in the Constitution. Yeah. Second, the Constitution that you're talking about is superseded by the Constitution of the Universal Postal Union. Just like the states ceded their jurisdiction to the United States, the United States ceded its jurisdiction to the Universal Postal Union. Well, that sounds like, like a, a member of the United Nations. That sounds like a problem for that corporation called the United States. What we're saying is the people that live in this country or each of these several countries that compose this nation, right? Yeah, we want our shit back. You guys can do whatever the fuck you want. And so okay? we, we gather up a group that can conform that confederation membership. You have to be able to form the confederation membership first, and then you can go to the UN and accept that document as a nation. Otherwise, like I said, one by one, we can we accept that document. I think, I think and then when time comes and there's enough of us, we can show that we're organized well enough that that's a, what it is. It's a fundamental misunderstanding. We've said we already have the, this, this nation was never lawful. Right. But again, it goes here. to the people's education on that. They don't understand that. That's the point of what we're drafting right now. Right, and that's to educate them. Right, First, and you have to educate them. Support, then you can form the confederation that you're talking about. Right, which we just want the, the, the original system that we had with a couple tweaks of everybody's free now, right? right? Except for the people in government, because as it says, like I showed in Article 1, right. Section 2, people who are in government are actually bound to terms of servitude right. for and a number of years. And that servitude in that constitution is subject to the Constitution of the Universal Postal Union, again, in the first article, wherein freedom of transit is guaranteed throughout the entire territory of the Union. And the we Union they're talking about is a Universal Postal Union. Which I'm is not talking about the Union. I'm talking about the Confederation of States. So, like, when you get to the first paragraph of the Constitution, the states already exist. And people think they got rid of the Articles of Confederation, and they also don't realize that the North was a confederation as well, just because the South called themselves the Confederate States or whatever, right? No, the North, the entire nation, every state was a Confederate state because that means it's its own nation. That's what the definition of that is. That means it is its own country, and it agrees to be loosely allied with its neighboring countries under a treaty, okay, that ended up getting evolved into the Constitution, which established a representation for that union of, of smaller countries, right? So we want to go all the way back to before the fucking uh, 14th and 14th Amendment, the 12th Amendment even, right? We want to go all the way back to just the 10 amendments and our original system. That's it. That's all we want to do. And well, you know what? The first 10 amendments are actually known as the Articles of the Bill of Rights. Right, the Articles of the Bill of Rights. I, I suggest people start, when you start looking up these these amendments, those amendments that you're finding, those are the, the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Those are the Constitution. Even the first through 10 are the Constitution. When right. you look at the Bill of Rights, first, second, third, they're going to be totally different. You're going to see a difference. They're different. Okay. Well, and that got amended for a specific purpose because we've been fighting these same people. But the original system, as it was set up, was as far as you could conceive of a system of government that balances individual liberty with the need for the protection of natural rights. That was a beautiful system that we had. And the only reason it got taken over was because of ignorance of the fucking law. When James Madison, again, when James Madison was asked, what type of government is it that we have? He said, a, a republic, if you can keep it. And George Washington and that's why they instituted the public education system, which of is a military is. system. Yeah, in we, yeah. 1860 was the first school. Think about yeah, that. Same, same time as the Civil War. Well, that's why George Washington said, and in order to keep it, every every man must know the law. Now every person must know the law. Every person that wishes to be free must know yeah. what what words mean, how the law is supposed to work, how law, you know. So every contract, every other other system of law is derived from natural law, which cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be recognized. And right. that for thousands of years, people have known that it's natural law. And really, once you got to like people like John Locke and William Blackstone, they were taken off with it. You know, yeah. they were really fleshing it out. Like this is how this is how this is what law is. That's why men and women can only practice law. We can only practice it. Yep. Lysander Spooner is one of, one of the guys you've researched. Have you researched love Lysander? Uh, I love he's him. One of the he's one of the proponents that the people 
are the law and they need to uphold it and enforce it. And that's what we were talking about earlier with George Washington saying the people had to be educated. You have to to educate the the leader. They don't know. (laughs) That's absolutely right. And women, right? The, the people yeah. are men and women, but persons is a is a role, like a, the, the social mask that you're a wearing. Persona, yes, yeah. yeah. So like, uh, and like to a, keep all of these our institutions sacred, like our the 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 schools and everything that we decide to erect as a community, as a people, to keep all of this sacred. We cannot allow foreign powers to control our money, and we cannot allow anything but tangible, valuable currency to be used as legal tender in the payment of debts. That's why Article 1, Section 10 even exists, because they knew that, that this was just as fundamental to maintaining your freedom and knowing the law is just as fundamental as keeping control of your money. That's it, keeping control of your wealth. Because as soon as you turn that over, it's they knew that that's because it had already happened. It was already happening in, 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 in England, right? They already knew what was going on. These people were already starting to do this. It's fundamental. And, and since everything that, and since, like he said, there's this, there's this over, over, uh, arching, uh, understanding and recognition of natural law, we have a real shot at getting all of this, uh, bringing it to awareness and they have to follow the law. Like he said, they're signed on to that universal law, which is based on natural law, right? And everything they did was unconscionable and a violation of natural law. Beyond the 10 amendments to our constitution, the federal overreach during the Louisiana purchase, the civil war, all that stuff, right? All of this stuff was against the law. So during those events, that's where law enforcement, that's what we need law enforcement for. That's the, do you want to enforce law, go arrest them motherfuckers so we can try them. How does that sound? And then you know what? I guarantee you, I have the support of the people who pay you. Mr. B, I hate to break your heart, but there was no really... That all that shit about the wild it's west, so program, dude. It's fucking sad, honestly, dude. It's story. It's storybook shit, Mr. B. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's that's absolutely what we need to do. So, um, so that, right, right there, that is the issue in America. Right there, that is the issue because we can sit up here on these platforms till we're blue in the face, but till that kind of ignorance, well, what we're is eradicated. Is we're discussing the solution to that. We don't really want to insult Mr. B because Mr. B, he was very, uh, he actually contributed a great deal on my stream last night because he asked I, I was there. That I'm I sure was some there. of my people were, some of my audience were thinking. They were like, okay, well, how does that work? How does this work, right? So somebody who's thoroughly programmed, you can come up, he wants to tell me that that a motor vehicle is not commercial and then I can bring it up right uh, on out of the United States code and show you that it's used for commercial purposes and then show you what commercial purposes means. And we should disregard the United States code altogether. But it, 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 the fact that their own shit shows you because the United States code is illegitimate. And so right. what we're, we, we want to bring problems, but here's the biggest problem I've experienced when I was learning is I would always find problems and never solutions. And then when I start telling people, this is the problem they have with what I'm telling them. Well, okay, what's the solution then? And then, so you're so smart about everything that's wrong. You're so smart about everything that's wrong. I was so smart about everything that's wrong, but I've given no thought to how to fix it. And so I would, I would literally. I I agree. I agree. I do construction and I I am absolutely about solution based. I just, it's, it's that you, you, I watched him yesterday be taught what you're saying is absolutely true and true right there in the code. Right. And then yet there's still ignorance and there's still the bantering. That's what I have. You're and not gonna get everybody. I'll, I'll yield. It, it, it's it's a personal court issue court. that I have. It it aggravates me. The court of yeah, it's gonna opinion. take people wanting the information to get it. But you can put it in their face and they won't drink it. Three percent. Three percent of a population is needed to instigate change. That's it. We don't need everybody. We don't even need most everybody. We need hardly anybody. But if it gains traction and people realize, well, actually, that idea sounds like a lot, a lot better idea than being extorted on a regular basis. Right. So once you see it has enough of a uh, traction and you can actually easily simplify how it works, like I was explaining, we got to be able to simplify what it is people are signing and how that is the case and be like this. You got enough people to vote in a president with 80 million people. You got enough people to vote in a new government. Right. But we don't even, in my opinion, we don't even need that many. We don't even need the 3%. We just need it to get traction. We need enough to bring awareness to it, to make it a pain in their fucking ass. 
right? And that's it. We well, need. I think it's already doing that. That's one of the reasons, like, that they focused pretty hard on this uh, story with this kid, right? They wanted to make it apparent. They wanted to really send the message out that if you explore these avenues, it's going to cost you yeah, your it's life. Dangerous. Well, before okay. war, you have to explore. You have a moral, ethical, spiritual obligation to explore every peaceful option. Okay. Right. And that's what we need to bring awareness to. We don't want to fight. We but don't see that thing is, Ryan, as I'm about to show you here, is even those that are compliant with their shit, they're still fucking gunning them down, even. Well, that's the point. But never have we had something that th this cut and dry. He what he did was he he sacrificed himself by standing on 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 the truth. Yeah, and if well, you let if we let this go without redress, right, then we are basically consenting to them shooting us for not allowing them to extort us. And that's the purpose of this to let them know that there's enough of us out there, right? That it, it to bring awareness to this. And that's what it's going to. And we can start with the impeachment charges. And that's what I recommend because that's going to reverse at least back to that point, yeah. right? And it, has, and it has been done before, guys. People just don't like to relate it to the situation. But Jesus Christ did the same thing, he threw yeah. off the government. Now, there's another guy I talked about the last time I was up on the panel, if you guys remember, was Gary Davis. Mm -hmm. the World Service Organization and the World Passport. He's the one in 1949 went before the, in, the the United Nations, interrupted them in session, broke through the doors and said, hey, I got an issue with this war shit you motherfuckers put me in. I'm a follower of Christ and come to find out it's nothing but a commercial war. I want nothing to do with American citizenship anymore. I'm a soldier of the world. That's how that got created. And he's not the only one throughout time that's done it. It's just that every time it's happened, they turn around and dismiss it. So today, there's, pre there's today precedent. We have, today we have record that the Homeland Security is taking those world passports, passports. But if you do it right, they give you what's known as a redress number to use in all future situations with government officials. Because a big aspect of this is they don't. There's a spiritual aspect to this. There is law they have to obey. Otherwise, they will get a karmic smackdown. And you can believe right. that or you cannot. I know it. I yeah, understand. That's why, that's why I refer to the scripture all the time. Yes, it is scriptural. Absolutely, it's one hundred percent scriptural, and that's the thing is they do have to follow the law. They do have to. Why wouldn't they just take and keep the passport? And you'll see instances of this all the time where the court could very easily just do one thing, but when you take a specific court of course of action that is one hundred percent right, there's nothing they can do, right? And they know that. And so here, the the most, in my opinion. We need to start with with at least at this point and we need to start bringing awareness to it and um getting this petition together and educating people we in all those other instances you just spoke of this technology and this reach for people like us did not exist it didn't we can reach people everywhere all over the world right now and every major government in the world is the same system it's all one we're already in a one world government We've been in a one world government. Oh, shit. Since at least since the U.N. was formed. Every single one. We were the model for the standardized debt slavery that each other country took how we did it and implemented it. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. That's why you'll hear people say that the Emancipation Proclamation was the standardization of slavery. It wasn't the abolishment of slavery. Yeah, it yeah. It didn't free black slaves. It enslaved every man on the planet. Absolutely. It's the standardization of slavery and a proclamation has no more lawful effect than a fucking mandate to begin with. That's the problem that the, the South had. Right. So, yes, slavery is wrong. We all know that now. That's the silver lining of this situation. But let's go back now. OK, we're good. We get it now. We see what happened. Right. We need to be edged. Now we learn from experience. We need to maintain our, our, our knowledge of the law control our own money supply and don't fucking enslave people, obviously. Right. I feel like that's the only way that they've karmically been able to get this far was because we were given freedom. And what did we do with it? We fucked it off. And that's, that's the important thing here, folks. Jose four verse six, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's, the I was true thinking benefit. that same thing. I was thinking so that, so when we what are, think about feeding a man for a day by giving him a fish, but you feed him for a lifetime if you teach him to fish, the excess on that is your intent in teaching him to fish is not just to feed him for a lifetime, but so that he too can go forth and show others 
how to fish now. This man, Chase Allen, sacrificed his life yep. for the truth. He's a martyr. We have technology we've never had before in any of these other instances. And we've never had clear and cut body cam footage of a fucking murder for standing on truth. And, and, and you and I and most other people that are probably watching have some. It, it, we know the truth and we know how to prove well, it. I can there's all kinds it. of incidences. January uh, this 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 past January, they killed some guy. He was he was in a yoga position with his hands in the air. Legs crossed, sitting there in front of him. And they shot him. Right. Multiple uh, times. From multiple angles. Let's no threat whatsoever. Up. Let's make their deaths meaningful. With let's not let them on the ground. Watch this one. Got, no, <laughs> all the police reports and everything for, concerning that with Chase Allen, because uh, it'd be helpful to you know pick out all the provable lies in there and uh, maybe come up with a list of interrogatories. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we have the footage. This is from. Uh, watch this. This is from. Uh, this is from 2017. Um, but this is still very. This is on. This is insane. Um, watch for this. Oh yeah, I remember this guy. Crying for his life, man. Begging. Stop! Right there. Stop! Stop! Get on the ground, both of you. Lay down on the ground. Lay down on the ground. For a pesticide gun. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm out, guys. Did Have a good a one. Thanks for having me. Another All right. Thanks for being here, Wizard. There's a very severe possibility you're Thanks much, man. Shot. Do you understand? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. What? This is... Shut up. I'm not here to be tactful or diplomatic with you. You listen. You obey. For one thing, did I tell you to move, young man? Did I tell you to yes, put yes, both yes, your yes, hands... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Put both your hands on the top of your head... Interlace your fingers. Take your feet and cross your left foot over your right foot. Who else is in the room? Nobody. Are you both drunk? You're not going to have any problems understanding anything that I tell you, right? Correct. Yes. All right. Can I go to the room? No, you're not going to do anything but come towards us. Young man, you're not to move. You're to put your eyes down and look down at the carpet. You're to keep your fingers interlaced behind your head. You're to keep your feet crossed. If you move, we're going to consider that a threat. And we are going to deal with it, and you may not survive it. Do you understand me? If you move, we're going to consider that a threat and we're going to grease you. Lady, shut up and listen. All right? You are to keep your feet crossed. Take both of your hands, put them flat in front of you. You are to push yourself up to a kneeling position. Kneeling position. Now, put both your hands in the air. Okay, crawl towards us. How is this not considered treason? It is considered treason. Doesn't treason hold a death penalty or up to 20 years? But what you're not understanding is he, he's not committing treason against the, the military he works for. We're occupied. Trying to figure out what kind of a rig he's got set up on there for optics. It's fucking crazy. Okay, I need one more cup, bro. Okay. Like Looks like murder optics. <laughs> okay, young man, listen to my instructions and do not make a mistake. You are to keep your legs crossed. Do you understand me? You are to put... Both of your hands, Sounds very reminiscent of a, a 
thing I saw about Germany in the 30s. Listen how confusing you got. right now. No, you no, no remorse, no nothing. Don't even care that he just killed that fucking guy. Nope. Like a video game. There again, that's just another instance, one of many that we see out there. I mean, really, was that guy, how was he a threat? I mean, at this point in time, they would have been able to ascertain that he was not armed. That was just a power trip fucking thing. He was right crawling there. on his hands and knees. Man. Peaceful yeah. options. Peaceful options first. Those people should go under in front of a, a jury of their peers for that incident. And they did. They did. I, I came across an interesting point I thought about for the right to travel because uh, he was acquitted. He was acquitted on murder charges. This, By uh, this, Where this did that happen? happen? The shooting happened in the La Quinta Inn in Arizona on January the 18th of 2016. Um, let's see, the guy, Philip Mitchell Brailes Brailsford, the officer who killed Shaver, was acquitted of murder charges on December 7th, 2017. Acquitted. Like I said, we need we just... They should have brought his ass back to the back 40. He's still well, a cop. What what should have happened is that should have been tried in common law. This is the whole point of the solution that we're we're all, that we're trying to come up with because we have to exhaust all peaceful avenues first. Should have been tried in common law for cat for murder, and received the punishment for murder under our common law, mm -hmm. right? Or under the common law of the state of Arizona. What what did you get back when before all this commercial shit took over the state? What happened in Arizona? For I murder? got some wood to donate for that purpose. Yeah, they, 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 they I believe it was uh, hanging. They, exactly. I, I got some wood to, to donate to that purpose for lots. So, under the, the actual lawful, the, the actual lawful jurisdiction of that state, as I had previously just said it, it, out of theory, but I want to clarify, he should be hung after being sentenced under the common law of Arizona by a jury of his peers who would review that footage and absolutely have no problem seeing how guilty he is right what do you guys think of this idea on uh, your automobile when you're uh, exercising your right to travel to get uh, american flag stickers and put one on the front and on the back because uh if you notice on their uniforms it's a backwards flag with the, with the gold border around it and then they have the blue line uh, gang flag or, or the black and white one so um you know, you're making it clear that you're so you're not an unmarked uh oh vessel. That's so, something about that flag too. When you see that flag, flags denote jurisdiction. That's right. the purpose of flags. That has always historically, all throughout history, been the purpose of flags. That's why ships would fly flags, that's why military forts would have flags, is to tell you what jurisdiction that, that parcel so you're, of land you're is stopping under. them and their presumptions that when you when you put an American flag on your uh, car, I, I thought that was a good point. That's something I intend to do to, uh, you know, improve. So oh, got to now. And yes. What about a right. state flag? Would a state flag have more precedence? Um, 
I don't know. Yes, because we're originally like confederations. So under the original common law, like I said, it would be Arizona's mm -hmm. common law because that's the most important thing to understand about what our country is supposed to be and how it was designed. We were a confederation of nation states. Whether you were, and that's why they, they the the use of the term uh, or uh, the confederate uh, the confederacy for the for the rebellion or insurrectionists, which were actually the we're not even going to get into that because they could people who are ignorant could take that a million different ways, but. Uh, we were history is lost you mean everybody was confederate everybody it wasn't just the south like that was the pre-existing state of our republic right that was the pre-existing uh situation it was a union of confederated nation states and it's so important to understand that when they drafted the constitution they did not get rid of the articles of confederation the Constitution merely built on the Articles of Confederation. The Articles of Confederation created every state that existed at that time, right? So the Articles of Confederation uh, was built upon by the Constitution. And so right when you get into the beginning of the Constitution, they're already talking about states. Well, where's the missing gap in law? When we're talking about law, you've got to supply that missing gap of uh, going from being a colony to a state. Right. You can't just be like, oh, it's all states. You never defined state. You didn't delineate what the rights of states are or any of that. That's why the Constitution did not create the states. The Article, Articles of Confederation did. They never got rid of it. It still stands. They just built upon it with the Constitution. Nobody even looks at the Articles of Confederation because they think it doesn't have any effect. It 100 percent does. The Articles of Confederation delineates what the states are allowed to do, which they have violated. One important thing to not overlook, uh, talking about the state flags, um, I don't know if the, if the government uses those uh, flags because uh, there's a difference. For instance, um, if you're uh, driving, traveling into uh, New York, when you um, come to the border, it says, welcome to New York. It doesn't say the state of New York. Let me, but let me clarify. The paperwork, it's, a, it's the state of. Let me clarify this that Dreamy Lynn is saying here, cops, peers, or other cops. No, a cop is a corporate entity okay that is an agency okay so his you're talking about the person who hid behind the agency to excuse the actions okay and that's the so common law wouldn't concern themselves with the the cop aspect of it they would concern themselves with the actions they were taken while in the office of being a cop by that person so the very first thing, which that his office is not even lawful, it's it's de facto, so it doesn't even matter. Impeachment processes wouldn't even take place. But if he was a cop and he was hiding behind the banner of being in office, right, or if he was like a sheriff or a law enforcement, actual constitutional law enforcement officer, and he was hiding behind the office of that of that uh the law enforcement, right? Well, the first thing that would happen is impeachment. Okay. And then and that's only if he was like a sheriff or the actual elected public official. If he wasn't, he would be removed from like he would his deputization would be removed and he would be charged as, as an as an individual person. And so it appear his peers then would be other free people. As soon as he crosses that line, he's no longer uh, a policeman. He's in his individual capacity. Exactly. As soon as he crossed that line and murdered that man, he was no longer acting in an official capacity. So he can't hide behind any, the what he was there for in the first place removed him from his official capacity. A fucking a, a pellet gun. The right to bear arms shall not be infringed. OK, and what we have as free people are not firearms. That's a commercial term for for corporate debt slaves. We have constitutionally protected arms, and it shall so not I had, be. In I had this no conversation matter. with four sheriffs on the side of the road as they pulled me out of a, uh, the conveyance that I was in. Um, I don't have a, or I did not have any kind of firearm or gun or anything like that whatsoever. In fact, I actually have a crossbow. Um, and, and after all, right. And that's, that's what I got to the point of. I said, you know, you have, I have every right to have this and you have no jurisdiction whatsoever. And we went around and around and it was kind of a, a little bit of a stressful situation, but at the end they didn't ID me or anything. I told them to go fuck themselves because I didn't break a fucking law. 
Absolutely. Here, <laughs> and it's important to know that distinction. So, firearm would be a commercial oh, sub, fuck, sub, man. sub classification if they wanted to try <sighs> to make that argument. But no, there is nothing in the Constitution. The Constitution is the only law. And that's the important thing to, to understand here, right? Is the Constitution is the actual only law of this land, right? And whatever, whatever it prescribes Congress to do, or it's not the only law. Let me revise what I just said. The Articles of Confederation, the Articles of Association that form the Union, which actually even predates this country. Then the, art, uh, the Articles of Confederation created the states out of the colonies, right? And so the Articles of Association, Union of Colonies, Articles of Confederation turned the colonies into states. And then the uh, Constitution created the, the federal uh, aspect of the representation of each one of those states, created a, you know what I mean, the, the final piece of the puzzle. And nowhere in any of those documents does it say firearm. And that those are the only laws. And anything not contained in those, and we're talking about the, the lawful ones before the fruit of the poison tree. So anything not contained in the Bill of Rights or the Constitution or the Articles of Confederation or even the Articles of Association. The laws yeah. express not implied. It does not apply. They cannot do it. Right. People think that the Constitution is there to protect our rights. No, it's to actually give the government the ability to do anything because we have all the power in this country. Uh, it's their instructions, not our rights. Right. It's their instructions, not our rights. You can't give us something that you didn't have to give us in the first place. Did you give me life? Did you give me breath? Right. right. No, you did they're, not. They're deputies. Let's not forget. You know, people call them sheriffs all the time. It gives them like a level of, uh, you know, that they that they don't um they have. You know, they're deputies. I don't. So I don't give them any. And there is no quarter that I give. <laughs> I hate, the I mean, word I deputy know. does not come out of my mouth when concerning with them. Yeah, no. well, they, you know, they they like to be called the sheriff, you know, and it says, uh, you know, their shirt say sheriff, their bulletproof vest and all that shit. But they're, you mean my bulletproof vest? You mean my shirts? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't want to partake in the benefits of privileges. The primary problem is the 14th Amendment, the 13th, 14th mm -hmm. Amendment. I would even say that, that uh, anything outside of the, the Bill of Rights is a problem, but really the major problem is the, four, the 13th and 14th Amendment and the 14th Amendment primarily, because what that did was that expanded. Uh, it, it made everybody a debt slave under the United States. And, you know, so it's interesting if uh, if you look at the the fourth provision of the 14th Amendment, right? Uh I don't know if you if you already ha if you have the 14th Amendment set, uh, brought up on your screen, but here's the thing. So you read that title that my dad put up earlier, Sovereign put up earlier, right? And um, it said that uh, you read that title and it said that uh, equal protection law or usurpation tool, right? That was the that was the the thing uh, that was brought to Congress by our congressman, right? And uh, you know, they have good cause to ask that because the usurpation is done through our financial system, right? By by basically bankrupting the nation, giving it par a power to third party international uh, money lenders who have no allegiance to any one of us. And then allowing them to uh, fluctuate like everything that he outlines in those impeachment charges, right? Uh, fluctuate interest rate, restrict or, or uh, you know, uh, overflow the market with with uh certificates whatever all these things they did that they that this could they did that because they knew that this would bankrupt us and once they bankrupted us then they placed us under uh trust indenture um to generate securities so that all we do is trade debt now and i want to show you guys if uh if sovereign i'll share the screen real quick just real quick i want to show you why the question of whether or not it was a usurpation tool um and I'm going to just share the one tab so we can really get into uh, this right there. Boom. Share. Look at this. Right. So equal protection or usurpation tool. Right. So the very first uh, let me know when it's uh, there we go. OK, so it's on there. All right. So whoops, right here. No. Nope, right. Here. So the very first thing, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to so when they're using the united states here they're talking about the confederation of individual of the several nation states so all persons born or naturalized in the united states and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the united now they're referring to two separate entities the united states they're talking about that corporate that corporate that martial law union that that 
the emergency war power entity that had taken over, right? And of the state in which they reside, right? So it says that and of the state in which they... So in this amendment, if this was already the case, if you were already a citizen of both your state and the United States, so they're using wordplay here. This is why it's important people know the law, not just law words, but the actual what the jurisdictions are and how how it works between the federal state, between the federal government, and the state governments and the state governments and the people. The people are supposed to have all the power. So they're using wordplay. And if people were already a United States citizen and a citizen of the state in which they reside, this very first sentence they were sure to make sure was the very first thing would be redundant as fuck. Because people already know that. It's like, well, duh. People would read this and be like, duh. Right? Why do you need to legislate that? Because this was not legislated prior to that. This or this was not put into any kind of law or code or anything. This was not made a, a thing. And prior to this document, that's why they had to write it out. Every word that's put into any any law, and especially when it comes to the founding document of the nation itself, is carefully chosen because it's enforceable on all levels, including spiritual, right? But we don't get into that because I know there's some skepticism, but just trust me, it's 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 very wisely and specifically chosen, especially when it's the founding document. So if this was already the case, then why would they have to state it as the first sentence? And then secondly, and actually the very first section of the, uh, or the first article of the constitution, if you read it and you understand what you're reading, it tells you that's not the case originally at all. And then now we'll go down here to the fourth. So, OK, so we're going to operate under the assumption that even though it was left to the states to determine or to protect the rights of the people and ultimately it's up to the people themselves and the states not to infringe upon those rights. Right. Uh, we're going to go with they're doing this for the newly freed blacks. OK, and they just want to make sure that their rights are protected, even though nothing says that they don't have rights as long as they're free in the Constitution. They have rights as long as they're free and they're uh they're a state citizen, right? So um, you go down here to this, section four, equal protection of rights. Huh? Then why does it say the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including in debts incurred for payment of pensions, bounties for services and suppressing insurrection or rebellion shall not be questioned. You can't question what the debt is anymore. I mean, that's basically like saying, fuck you. <laughs> Don't you, ask. You can't question the debt anymore when controlling the monetary system of your nation is the most fundamental uh, uh, thing to your liberty. Right. Knowing the law. And if you knew the law, like Je uh, uh, Washington said, then you would already know that controlling your monetary system is the most important thing. All right. And that's why you said you have to know it. And then why, if this is an equal protection amendment, then why is this slipped in there like that? So operating under that uh perspective doesn't it seem like this was a setup for the future takeover trust and denture equity system that we're now under so now what so let me explain it simply this expanded their jurisdiction and allowed them to maximize their collateral to make loans from private international banks so now instead of just having a small handful of people that are actually under the citizens of this a uh, corporate entity that's outlined in the second sentence, right? This sentence is talking about the Confederation of States. This sentence is talking about the corporate entity that was formed by the Organic Act. Okay. And then, and, and, and yes, they were intentionally given the same name, right? And, and they're just used in different contexts. And then uh, down here you have, so now you're a citizen of this, this corporate entity and now it allows them to maximize their their collateral that they have and centralizes the borrowing power, centralizes the borrowing power, because now they don't have to OK it through each individual state and, and the people of those states. Now you've centralized it. How, how do they not have to ask, ask the people? The, because, word, the word citizen has been perverted, the definition of yeah. it. Yes, it has. The validity of the subject uh, now, you know, and, so, um, it used to mean one of the people. To my knowledge, we, to my okay. knowledge. Well, citizenship to my knowledge, a U.S. citizen, uh, a U.S. citizen is one defined as one that is born in the ten square miles of Washington D.C. and/or its territories, such as Puerto Rico and Guam. Yes, when it's so, yes, and that's exactly that's exactly correct. 
but see, they use this intentionally confusing. So it's uh, under our constitution. You didn't even have to be a citizen at all. You could just be an inhabitant. And the well, there's more. Than, there's the more than too. Like, uh, sorry, your natural well, rights were recognized. You didn't even have to be a citizen of whatever. You were an inhabitant. That that word is used. And then you look under Bouvier's Law Dictionary. That that word is used over here. Um, whoops. Over. Let's see. Can I switch it over to the other type? Let me. I should have just they, shared my. Whole they change story. things really subtly. Huh? Like it said, it'll say the United States of America on uh, those old documents with the capital <laughs> for the, for the uh, first word. But, Look at this. Grammar is important. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Nobody notices that stuff. Like, like the uh, the United it used to be the United States Post Office. Now it's the uh, the Postal Service. Look, United it States still States, it still Article, exists. Article one, section uh, section two, right here, right. Uh, inhabitant. It says in it uses the term inhabitant of that state. Right. Which is saying the elected fit, uh, official. Right. Will have to have been a citizen of the United States for seven years and will not be an inhabitant. Doesn't say citizen of that state. Doesn't say anything. It says will not be an inhabitant. Right. And when you look up inhabitant, Bouvier's Law Dictionary, inhabitant includes a citizen, but it also includes people who are not a citizen. And your natural rights are still recognized. It doesn't matter. That's why this I use. And the reason I use says general that, delivery for that purpose. purpose. You're not going to be an inhabitant of that state because once you're agreeing to work for the United States federal government, right, you become a citizen of the United States federal or you are a citizen of the United States federal government. You're going to not be able to be an inhabitant or citizen of the state in which you reside. Right. How, or an how does that work with the general delivery? How does that work? You just general go there every so often and ask them if there's any mail for you. Yep. And there is no zip code. It's general delivery. The post post office that you're going to so like if you lived in you know kansas um or if you lived on kansas or whatever and let's say your your post office the closest one was say paducah or excuse me kentucky and paducah um you would just go for general delivery paducah post office and then in care of your name pretty much Care of. It's well worth looking up. General delivery. So just to summarize this, this right here centralized the borrowing power by telling all everybody in the country they couldn't question the debt. Centralized the borrowing power uh, to Congress, which was much smaller than the people of all of the Confederate states, which includes the northern states were Confederate. Right. So you centralize the borrowing power and you maximize the collateral by saying everyone is now a citizen of the United States. Doesn't matter, right? So if you're born naturalized in, in any of the United States, just being born in in any of the United States is going to make you a citizen. This this amend, amendment is is a is illegitimate, 100. percent And when you start looking at the history about the Moorish nationals, that all that that's been hidden from us, you'll start to understand the light in which these documents were drafted and why they use the specific language that they do right there are already there's already an entire nation here like i'm sure you guys have seen on on this channel already there's already an entire nation here what happened right this is what we need to be figuring out but what we know is that this is illegitimate and it maximizes the borrowing power and you fall and by becoming a citizen of this corporate united states this government services corporation which is what this united states represents right here uh you fall into a contractual black hole OK, of the arbitrary legislation of Congress, they can now legislate. The only absolute right you now have is to residence within the territorial United States. That's, that's a scary word. Residence. Well, well, that's what you are now because you're a United a States. thing identified. Well, you're yeah. a, you're you a United, no titles, right? You're a citizen of the United States now. Right. So any state that you live in. OK, you're now going to reside. That's why they use this language. Now you're going to reside instead of inhabit. You're going to reside. Resident is a foreigner. Resident that's, is not. Is it, it's not a permanent thing. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. learning. Um, with, and that's why I bring up the whole general delivery thing, because I'm not a resident of the city. When you look and up, that is. Look at the doctor. When, they, when a doctor graduates from medical school. They go to a um, hospital and, and as a resident, and uh, mm -hmm. they're like the 
low man on the totem pole. They do all the shit. It's jobs, a temporary so situation. Yeah, it's, it's not, it, they're not. Uh, they have no status. Uh, you know that they, they uh, they're low on a totem pole. Is the best way I can think to, to say it. It's not what you want to be a resident. It's, it's temporary in nature. And now I read this dictionary for fun. And the more I read this, the more I realize Bouvier was even implicit on subtly changing certain things, right? Because you find yep. in even older dictionaries, oh, yeah, he's 100% uh, complicit with it, right? But we're going to look at inhabitant real quick, right? And this is an interesting uh, – because it mentions something about residency. And what it, resi what, it, what it mentions about residency should raise some questions for people because uh, – let's see, in chief, blah, blah, blah. Did I pass it? I think so. And no, nope, it's down here. Resident is from the Latin residenti well, or something like that. And it means thing identified. Yeah, that was my yeah. understanding too that I found. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, and that there again goes from the citizen is the identification. You're, you know what I mean? As a, a, a within that, uh, yeah, exactly. Identified. I'm um, not a and thing. It's also, I really want to be identified. You know, when they say you got some ID, a driver nope. license isn't, a, isn't an ID oh, anyway. Oh, it has an expiration date, and it, it doesn't say what your uh, your um. Good God. Where you descend from? It gives you a persona. Yeah. I try and pass. It, but it, a persona um, is able to be changed at a moment's whim. If they're looking at me, I am identified. You know, I'm a inhabitant. Here we go. One who has a domicile in a place is an inhabitant of that place, uh, and it's also one who has an actual fixed residents right so there's a, this is a uh, specific this is what they had now as united states citizens residing in a state we have fixed residents in our state but we're not citizens of our state anymore we just have fixed residents in our state right and um where does it say that about the residency it if says, they really wanted to identify you they would have a mobile fingerprint scanner there it is own, right here piracy vessels, Look at this. You know? this should this should bring up some questions right a mere intention to remove to a place will not make a man an inhabitant of such place okay although as a sign of such intention he may have sent his wife and children to reside there okay and it says nor will his intention to quit his residence unless consummated deprive him of his right as an inhabitant so you can still inhabit a state without being a resident. Well, how is that's, that possible? That's right? that's what I. There. If you're there, I've been you're dealing with my city for quite a while, and these are all the same things that I was looking up specifically for that purpose, because they kept on attempting to tell me that I had to adhere to some fictitious code that I never agreed to. So take the United States Constitution. Up there I have. And oh, I have. And take this dictionary, because what's what's beautiful about this dictionary, even though Bouvier was complicit, is that this one is specifically still made to adapt to the or uh, yep. is adapted to the Constitution of the United States. So the inhabitant has such a lengthy uh, definition because it is yep. in the very first article of our Constitution. So he expounds on this. What does this mean for you? Because the Constitution, again, is the only law. It's important to realize that natural law is the universal fundamental law. Right. And when people decide they want a government to protect those natural rights, they then create a constitution, which is a contract. And that constitution is founded upon natural, the natural law of contracts. Right. Uh, as far as like your right to contract under natural law and what is implied in that, which you have to it, it requires mutual consent. And what was beautiful about our founding documents, it was a contract written to recognize natural rights, natural law. And by and it does so by assuming them. The, the actual common law presumption is that you have all of your natural rights unless you waive them or forfeit them or or give or give them away by consent right that's a common law presumption whereas the commercial presumption is that you have no rights that's the complete opposite yeah. right so that's how our, that's what we were founded on and um it's important to they cannot so everything that they claim to be able to lawfully do right claim even though we can prove all of this is unlawful it's underhanded they use coercion subversion uh everything right um it, it, that makes it fraudulent it's very easy to prove um but they still claim to derive their authority because they their entire existence is based on the, this document at the constitution this document right over here okay that's every federal power, every federal authority that they claim to have is derived from this, right? And now when it comes to the state governments, this is where, this is the original constitution of the state of Michigan. 
And what is the very, after the preamble, what is the very first thing about any political power? What does this say? All power, all political power is inherent in the people first, first. Look, it says first dot. All political power is inherent in the people. What are the state constitution going to do you any good? Right. So now look at this. Now look at this constitution over here. Right. What does this first section say about it? Whoops. Come on, you piece of shit. Uh, it says right here, all legislative powers herein granted. So there is no legislative powers for a, a federal government except for what is herein granted shall be vested in a Congress. OK, but where does that original power stem from? Stems from and this. Shall too. Careful that word shall. All political power is inherent in the people. So this is what created the state to even enter into a confederation, right? This is where the power derives. This is the, the very basis. The, 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 and they cannot refute this. Now, many county clerks and, all, and law enforcement and all these people are ignorant of this, but this is how you bring this right to their attention. So you bring this here. That doesn't then, mean must. And then you bring this here, right? Well, it, 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 it's different. Shall be vested in Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate uh, and House of Representatives, right? That does, it does actually mean that this, that's the point of the Constitution is they don't have any powers outside of, if they had powers outside of what was in this, they wouldn't have uh, did all of instigating an entire war just to be able to pass this, this was the primary goal of the Civil War. This is the this is what they wanted. This is what they wanted to happen. This federalized this corp this made the the United States corporate instead of Confederate. That's what this did. Okay, you know, there's, you, there's no question about that. I think I even have over here in this. Uh, Lincoln said that in one of his speeches. He said, "I care not for the for the look individual. Look I this. care for what is the, the, high the union." No, look, just to keep this train of thought, what is the highest square? But whatever an alliance or when wherever an alliance is not corporate, but Confederate, the sovereignty resides in each state. That's what was important. OK, so the the states that were entering into this agreement that I have under this entirely different tab group right here under here, the states that were entering into this right were 100 percent. Confederate, because that's what this whole case decision is based on, right? And that's what they recognize. This is Supreme Court of the United States, not the United States Supreme Court, Supreme Court of the United States, which, yes, there's a difference, right? And it says, uh, it yeah. says that the uh, no state, he says, now the state retained all powers, which she did not expressly surrender to the union. Well, where was that expressly surrendered to the union? Well, that was done over here in the other tab in the Constitution. Uh, and included the the first the Bill of Rights, right? So the, that is all that is all that was that was given to the federal government. And the Bill of Rights was added to make sure the government knew for sure what the fuck they weren't supposed to be able to fuck with. And you know, and now it says something else that's interesting, which explains the money. Now the state it says a state cannot cease to be sovereign, but without its own act. Okay, so now we're going to think about that. Can the state decide to do that just themselves as a governing body? No, of course they cannot, because according to this, my state constitution, it says, first, all political power is inherent in the people. OK, so first of all, any power that the state even thinks it has or decision making the state even thinks it has is inherent in the people. So that's what individual constitutional republic founded on individual liberty means. It means, first of all, they cannot force you to do anything that violates your natural rights. Second of all, anything that is done is up to the consent of the people. And the, the thing in question cannot involve anything having to do with your, your individual natural rights. It can't. The thing in question that we're going to decide upon politically as a group, that's why it's a democrat. A demo, this is the only democratic process. Is it, we're going to decide on things that have nothing to do with our natural rights. Just the way that this government is going to function, that's inherent in the people. We're going to decide how this government's going to function. And the one thing we all for sure know is not going to happen is no decision that's going to come before the government is going to involve our natural rights. And that's the point of that, right? And so Penn Hollow versus Stone's administrator says one more valuable thing, which reiterates Article 1, Section 9, right? It says that 
A state cannot cease to be sovereign without its own act, nor can sovereignty be asserted, but upon a clear title. And this goes back to the ship captain and the guy getting the voyage, man. When he's in debt to that ship captain, he's entered into an agreement to receive the loan of a voyage. That voyage represents the valuable that 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 uh, that that voyage represents the, the financial value of the mortgage of the trust indenture. Right. And once he agrees to take on that debt from the ship captain, he can no longer claim his, his, uh, whatever is his status is at the time. Right. So if we were to say it was in the United States, after the United States was formed with, in, as a constitutional Republic, he would return back to sovereignty. He would return back to sovereignty. Okay. Uh, because now he has a clear title. He paid that debt. So what happens when you end up in a perpetual, uh, debt system where literally the money that you use to operate it as a country, is only generated because of debt, right? Is a, it's a, in fact, it's, it's secured by you and all it represents is debt. Well, who owns that debt? Because we can't have a clear title till that's taken care of, right? Well, the whole issue is because of the 14th Amendment, right? Because of this 14th Amendment, we weren't allowed to even fucking decide anything, the validity of the public debt, right? Uh, shall not be questioned, right? It shall and not that, be questioned. Wouldn't that prove the illegitimacy of the whole thing? I mean, it right is. there in and uh, of itself. I mean, yes, that 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 thread that I just wove is exactly yes. That's right. Because it's, there's it's no right. getting disregarded. You know, uh, what are we gonna do? Like, uh, you know, tomorrow con concerning these violent policy enforcers. You know, when we're out there uh, exercising our right to travel. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know the chase animals. You know. These shows coupled these shows coupled with a uh, these shows coupled with a petition. These shows coupled with a petition. I mean, should we really be giving up a passport? You know, that's why are you identifying? You're not uh, you're not traveling to another country. Why are we showing these um you know these municipal thugs uh, a passport? You know, which then they, they then hold you hostage by if they don't kill you. You know. That, that is that is exactly what was being that's exactly what I was saying. It's like um it's all illegitimate. Now the only issue left, it's easy to weave this thread to show that the illegitimacy once you know where to look and how it's been done. Now we now we're at the action stage. Let's bring awareness. We're at the and that, that's what Alpiro came up here. That's my dad uh, is is uh adamant about the these impeachment charges, and so am I, dude, because they this right here, we actually have something in their own system that was a huge pain in their ass. They knew it was going to be, so they just ignored it and hoped nobody noticed. So, yeah, Jim, exhaust your uh, remedies, like right up the food chain to, to take it to... Um... What remedies? We don't have any Article Three courts anymore. Uh, what remedies? Yeah, right? yeah I don't have, know. You'd have to take I see to those me. remedies dwindling quickly. I mean, I, I'm I'm all for solutions that make sense. I'm all about it. I just, I don't, I see within our lifetime that these, these remedies that we are speaking of at some point, there's going to be somebody out there that is just going to be enough is enough. And it's going to start. I don't know. Well, what I, do you I, think, it's sad. What do you it's, think it's really if, they, if they arrest it's, Trump on Tuesday? No, I'm, I'm not saying Trump's, you know, anything outside of the system. Oh, Craig, that would definitely be a, a set off point. Absolutely. Well, what do you think? Well, what do I, I think? No, I'm sorry. I think, I'm, because he's the no. one who brought it to my attention. I didn't even know about the shit. And then I seen Dabu 77 uh, report on it earlier. It's, yeah, I uh, seen that. That's going to be a serious situation. Well, um, yeah. what are you talking about? The Trump arrest? Yeah. Okay, well, look at here's something I was looking at. You know, when have you ever heard where the Department of Justice or any other agency like that says, um, we're going to come arrest you at Tuesday on Tuesday at around two o'clock? Does that fit in your schedule? They, they just come and fucking get you. They don't tell they don't make appointments like that schedule an arrest i mean you know what the fuck it's so make it just roll you know maybe, maybe there's a warrant out for him and he's going to go in for it 
Or maybe it's just a confabulated fucking bullshit to get people fighting. Because look, man, they're trying everything in their power to get us set off. You know, that, you know well, he is the tip board. of the spear and all. It's so full good. spectrum attack, man. They're hitting us with the food. They're hitting us in the water. They're hitting us in the air. They're hitting us with the fucking everything all at once. Could this, could this, uh, this, the, these series, these strings of unlawful uh, murders, right, of innocent people be something being done to antagonize people like us, possibly? Good. I think we still fear they don't want us doing it. You know, the easiest way to stop it is to not have anyone doing it. You know, so, I mean, people are uh, so apprehensive to, to do right to travel, even if they uh, realize that it's that it's true, you know, which most people won't take it upon themselves to do. But even if they do, they're still too scared, you know. So and now, uh, you know, like kid got shot. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I've been beaten down. I, I don't have the, uh, you know, the same. Uh, you know, well, who, who was the there. guy? Who was the guy here just uh, within the last couple of years in New York? Eric Gardner. Yeah, for selling cigarettes. Yeah, because he was selling fucking cigarettes. Yeah, <laughs> death penalty, right, right there. Judge, jury, and executioner, um, policy enforcers. That is so policy. There's no That's law. Good. There's no law trivial enough that they won't kill you over it. Now, how many? We've all been, been, over. Over. We've all been on the side of the road we'll probably several times, right? All right, you have the right to run a business and provide for yourself. There's nothing, there's no law that can be ever passed to infringe upon that right. That's part of your natural rights. And they shot him for it. So it's time people realize, like he just said, we're, we're occupied by a foreign hostile force. They're trying to instigate us to fight each other. And once well, you realize what the yeah. truth is, why would we? Here in Buffalo, there's a massacre at a supermarket. And I think that was to uh, uh, make racial tension. Because, you know, people are starting to realize it, you know, wake up against the, the powers that be. And, um. They always want to, you know, drive a wedge in between, you know, whether it's racial or that was a terrible thing that happened. And then, but they didn't shoot him. You know, this was a guy with um, AR-15 or whatever, uh, just uh, massacred 14 people in a supermarket. And then, you know, all the um, police and everything, they'll go there. They didn't, they weren't in fear for their lives then. The guy's sitting there with the rifle in his hand. There's dead bodies all around in the supermarket. This is like a year ago. And, yeah, uh, that, you know, that, life, they talked him down and took him into custody. I, I even question whether or not that was real. You know, well, if that it was shit, real because I, I played like chess a, in that neighborhood. Uh, um, you know, it, it was real. There was, you know, yeah, I mean, it, that whole thing looked like a goddamn Call of Duty video game or some shit to me. I mean, I'm just saying, there was a whole bunch of shit like that. The guy goes, you know, there's a guy just standing standing there calmly in the doorway, you know, as, as there's bodies supposedly laying right, around. Right, and they didn't body. shoot him, but you, then you got Chase Allen, you know, he didn't even have a gun in his hand, you know, and uh, they were such in fear, but this guy... Did they, hire the, uh, did they hire the police officers from Chase Allen's situation to do the, the business over at the other situation? I mean, it's the same kind of situ you get with like the same kind of cold heartedness from yeah, yeah. law enforcement. Well, it's because well, that makes sense. They're doing. They're you got to look. They're using, they're using this element of war with them too to convince them that they're at war with the people. They dress them up for war. They give them weaponry of war. They hit them with all this rhetoric that everybody's out there to try to fucking kill you. And also by with this blue line gang shit that they do, they're a different class. You see, it's sort of like the difference between a GI and a gook. You see, we didn't call them North Vietnamese soldiers. We called them gooks or zipper heads. Or if we were in World War II, we called them nips. And um, you got to separate it. Yeah, they yeah. They dehumanize yeah. them before they massacre them. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. So if, if they're already, if they're yeah. already in a mindset of they're human and you're not, the even if it's just the subconscious, organ. they're gonna they're gonna react. They're gonna treat you that way. It's and the more right. we and the more we rub their asses with this yeah. "I back the blue" bullshit. You see, that's just propaganda to get you to support the bullshit that they're doing, you know, uh, under the guise of, oh, compliance is a virtue, you know, 
um, uh, compliance healing, is uh, a virtue for the weak. Right. Well, well, these are the same type of people you see, like when you were in school, the people that wanted to be hall monitors and shit, because they narc you out <laughs> the administration and they get a pat on the back. They're granted privileges. You see. This is a serious problem, though, with the sovereign citizen. You know, anybody that uh, thinks for themselves and takes it upon themselves to read a couple books, you know, gets labeled as a domestic terrorist and you pretty much got a, a, a mark on your head, you know? Don't use that term, sovereign citizen. That is not... I, I don't, I, but, uh, you know, I was yeah. looking at the, you know, you do a YouTube That's search and word. you see the, uh, and with Chase yeah. Allen, you know, of Chase Allen, the videos, and uh, that, that comes up and comes up, you know? And then they say um, the uh, Amer American yeah. state nationals too, and they're using that in a derogatory sense um, about um, Chase's mother. I'm going to, I'm, I'm about to get off here shortly because I was up to like four o'clock in the morning and I got barely any sleep. But the last thing I want to say in, and this is addressed to law enforcement. Okay. Is this, is that, and to people is that there are, it's obedience to authority. It's that principle of where people uh, ignore their conscience because somebody in charge tells them that they're doing the right thing. They grow up in a culture where they believe following every arbitrary statute and code equates to following the law. When in many instances, statutes and codes are in direct contradiction to what the law actually is because they do not know and have never been told. And before they were given a badge and a gun, they were given very little knowledge of what the law actually is. Very little, no they were given a very little uh, bit of knowledge about one aspect of the entirety of law and commercial code. That's what they're trained in is commercial code. They're not trained in law. So they take this oath to uphold, defend, and protect the Constitution of the United States, right? And then they turn around and don't, don't read it and don't understand it and don't even know what jurisdiction it was drafted in, right? And they don't even understand the difference between jurisdiction and venue. All of these, so it's FBI jurisdiction, oh, it's uh, it's DEA jurisdiction, state jurisdiction, it's county jurisdiction, it's municipal jurisdiction. Those are all venues of commercial law at this point. None of the, the, the jurisdictions are actually which law are you operating in? Are you operating in natural law or are you operating in commercial law? essentially are you operating in the, the law of of yeah. the land and people or are you operating in the in the uh law of fictions and 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 commerce and so i want to say this right so there's a lot of officers that are out there that are not, the law enforcement officers that are not aware of their violation of their oath and they're not aware of what it is that they're doing and they're so programmed to believe that what they're doing is the right thing and it is not you're you're violating the law OK, and you, you cannot have a clear conscience, even if you think your conscience is clear, what you're doing is murder and extortion, theft. OK, uh, coercion. OK, that's what you're actually doing objectively. When you learn history. And so if we were to pull this off, I like I said, I support law enforcement and I support good law enforcement officers that only want to enforce the law and don't concern themselves with petty bullshit. And there's a lot of them out there. But the prerequisites to become a law enforcement officer should be the same as becoming a law scholar. So you're fully informed. I think on every I think activity. there should also be a physical fitness aspect to that. Well, that's there we go. I mean, yeah. physical fitness <laughs> and a, a test on the Constitution. And, uh, you know, they'll probably solve our problems right there if they had to take a test. Uh, to have, have an understanding of the oath that they take to uphold the Constitution and the rights of the people. They don't do that. You know, so th there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it at all. I was talking to a local um, officer in the Capitol uh, uh, over in St. Paul um, in Minnesota here. And I asked him if he knew the five elements of the First Amendment he got three and he said, yeah, it's been a long time. I looked at him. I said, are you not on? A, are, are, aren't you on duty right now? He said, yeah. I said, then how has it been a long time since you've upheld your oath to that document in which you swore to? If you can't even pr produce the first five elements. A carpenter like, doesn't forget about to read what? a tape measure, you know? You have to remember I, I, I guarantee you I won't learn or I will not uh, I cannot use a tape measure because I know what a foot looks like because I've done it that many times 
but much like that police officer, if he could spit that off, that means he's involved in understanding right. of that oath. Exactly. And and he actually gives a shit about his, the people as opposed to the paycheck. Here's another ask. thing too with calling them officers. You know, if, if they got a whole group, say there's uh, 50 of them in their platoon, the officers would be like the ranked ones. And uh, right. all the, uh, the rest Absolutely. would be just like uh, grunts. You know, I'm sick and tired of everyone calling them officers. officers it's normally officers. awful, sir, from they, me. They, they are holding an office, though. That's what's important. Or, they or hold that they're not holding an office on because that would be an elected official, right? Uh, the sheriff well, of the county is an officer. Yes, when I say law enforcement officer, and I'm and I'm referring to my hypothetical situation of how things should be constitutionally, I am talking about officers because they're the ones liable for the actions. Uh, everybody in their department uh, that they are or in their uh, in their office, they they are liable for not departments, commercial term, but they're liable for everybody in their office. OK, and uh, that's what, you know, that's essentially the point of that. But there was one thing uh, uh, I was going to say that was important to to uh, fuck. What was it? Well, whatever this the uh, law enforcement is exact is uh, is exactly that they need to know what the law is. That, oh, that's what is spiritual. There's a spiritual aspect to this. And whether people want to admit it or not, natural law, which is what the Constitution is founded in and on. The Constitution is founded in natural law and on natural law, Okay, meaning it's a it's a document that was only created through the right to contract. Okay, and it recognizes that fact and everything that goes into that. And because of that, every person who lays their hand and swears an oath to God that they're going to uphold a document and then they never read it. That's ridiculous. There will, there will be consequences. That's all I have to say, whether it's in this life or the next. Yeah. But That's why it says don't it, give your oath or affirmation, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. Yep. Because there are right. consequences to the words and the, the things that we do. Absolutely. I've called many, many, uh, whenever I have a situation with my local, um, my local boys in blue is, um, <laughs> I always end up talking to the same captain and we, we have developed a relationship in the sense of, I call him and tell him about himself. And he tells me that they're going to investigate themselves. And then there, we have this subsequent conversation where he finds nothing wrong. I asked him if he's ever read the constitution. He's never really given me a straight answer. It's because he has. Hey, you guys, uh, you guys want to review my one of my uh, right to travel uh, and see what I could have done better? It's like ten months ago. It's only like well, um, I, I do believe the gentleman I'm was. Ready, I'm getting ready to shut this broadcast down here because it's yeah. too late and uh, everything. We can do it another night. Um, okay. But I want to give everybody go around once. Give everybody a chance to say something. Their last words. I'll go ahead and start uh, with. Uh, you know, saying here. We'll go with nubs here, and I'm going to go backwards around. Well, I had said mine, so have a good night, okay? All right, good night. Thanks Bert. for having me on, by the way. And right on, right. Thanks for everybody watching. All right, bye. Before you bounce real quick, oh, never mind. Um, so what I was going to say is uh, if we could get something on that FARA document, I'd, I'd like to know more about that, what everybody knows on another broadcast at another point sure. in time. Um, I definitely appreciate the uh the time you guys put into this um you know obviously i see the dedication and you know the the faith so i appreciate it much love yeah nubs thanks for coming christopher real right on ice harvard so uh you know just uh the right to travel i think it's the most important issue that um we need to be aware of it and just keep driving the point home, and, you know, especially with Chase Allen um, being murdered like that. Um, yeah. uh, you know, awareness was, was really um, gaining ground, I think. I mean, for me, that's just evidenced by uh, what I see online, you know, to, to um, try to gauge the progression, uh, you know, of things. Because uh, I'm the only one that in my area doing it that I know of. So uh, there's always ways to... Um, you know, tighten it up and do it, do it a little better. 
Yeah. You know, but the dangers, the dangers there. But um, you know, once you know the truth, then you, you know you, there's a danger of uh that being true to to doing what you know is right. You know, you right. have to. Uh, so, just trying to uh, you know, find little things. You know, uh, analyze it and uh, find ways to do it better. I see the mistakes I made, uh, previous encounters and things that it couldn't have been helped. You know, but I I was targeted. Mm-hmm. I, I have reason to believe that uh, it, it's clear to me that I, that it was planned attacks, not just a chance encounter. You know that the, oh, oh, he has no license plate. We're gonna pull him over. It was planned. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, just like with this kid here, you know. And the thing is, is they've got these people believe believing. Oh, these people are are a threat. They're a threat, and it's not. It's it's the closest to being an original American as you can possibly be. The only thing it's a threat to is this bullshit system, okay? Um, Nobody's out there advocating violence against the system at all, but it seems like the system is advocating violence against those that point out the illegitimacy of it. And it's always been that way, you know? Um, The thing, I think one of the biggest things is these, these guys, regardless of whether that was over his license tag or... You know, I mean, all of that, we, these, these guys went zero to a thousand in, you know, a half a fucking second. They planned that. Like, they knew, oh, Chase Allen, they said, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and the thing was uh, that escalated so quickly as soon as that, and that guy yelled gun, they just start shooting. They just started fucking shooting as soon as they heard that. Not, I mean, Whoever was in the camera view, you know, was wearing the body camera that we watched there wasn't the one that saw it. I mean, I didn't see any threatening action with a gun that would, in that period of time where they're going to just execute a guy with that many rounds. And then the guy was disappointed because he didn't he had to he jammed. Yeah. Notice they were uh, they were able to not shoot each other, though, when they're all standing yeah. around in a circle shooting the same car. You know, they were trained enough to not shoot each other. See, I would have a hard time on a situation like that. I'd end up, I, I'd end up in trouble. I would end up in trouble if I came across a situation where they'd done something like that. I would seriously end up in a lot of trouble. I guarantee it. Um, I've thought about that before, you know, and because I that just angers the shit out of me to see that. Um, they try to act like everything they can just do any violence they want to under the guise of oh, officer safety, officer safety. That's fucking bullshit. If you're that much of a pussy, you need to be in a different job. That's the way I look at it. Um, and and stop they're, thinking they're, the fucking public so goddamn dangerous. They're not. They're you creating know? dangerous situations. You know, if the, there would have been, there was nothing for them to respond to. Yeah, no, they made, no, there wasn't. They created yeah. the dangerous situation. That man was uh, traveling uh, peacefully. And yep. um, they engaged him, and they created a dangerous situation. Who, who cares if he had um, uh, t- ten guns in there in his car? It doesn't matter. He, he wasn't pointing at anybody or threatening anybody. It was all created by them. Yep, yep. Well, let's see, Country City Slicker. Any last words for the uh, for the uh, public out there that you wish to convey at this time? I think we might have lost him. All right. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Um, everybody showed up in chat. I think we got a lot of good information. Burn the Corporate Fiction has some great stuff. Uh, go over and check out the, the live stream that he and I did last night um, on his channel. Um, he's got some other great shit on there and look for a lot more to be coming. Um, and like we say, you know, don't trust Whitey. Lord loves a working man and stay the fuck away from the doctor if you can at all help it. <laughs> stay free and enjoy your lives, my friends. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Well, no, I won't see you. You'll see me. I'll see little people in the chat, but you know what I mean. Good night.